The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show sticks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this championship overreaction Monday, January 29th, 2024. This program starts now. Football! It's glorious. Football is amazing, and they had a fantastic championship Sunday just yesterday, where the Kansas City Chiefs, who is still the Kansas City Chiefs, went into Baltimore and out physical them. Right. Out disciplined them. Right. Out creative them. Right. They got a massive win over a very dominant Baltimore Ravens team who played their worst game mm-hmm. when the lights were the absolute brightest. And then in the second game, the NFC Championship was decided in Santa Clara, California, Ooh. when the brand new, new Lions. Lions got out to a 17-point lead by halftime. Hell yeah. 24-7 going into the half in <laughs> Santa Clara. Brock Purdy sucks. The Niners are nothing post the bye week that they got after they earned the number one seed. Just a few weeks ago, they snuck by the Green Bay Mm -hmm. Packers. Only played about five minutes of good football last week. And then this week, they don't even know what football is. Then Nick Bosa, Kyle Shanahan, Brock Purdy, Kittle, and others spoke up at halftime. And in the third quarter, 17 to zip against the Detroit Lions. 24-24 going into the fourth quarter. It was magnetic. And now the Super Bowl is set. The Kansas City Chiefs, who have been to four of the last five Super Bowls. Whoa. Jesus. Four of the last five Super Bowls. Pretty wild. Good football team. Yeah. With Taylor Swift and the Swifties in cargo right next to him. I hate that team. I'm not going to watch the Super Bowl because they're on Travis Kelsey. Experian Travis, Subway Travis. I hate this guy. I ain't going to watch him. Taking on. The San Francisco 49ers. I hate this team! Mm-hmm. Oh, Brock Party, I hate him! Game in this here. ain't paying everybody! <laughs> everybody the Super Bowl. The NFL's got to be pumped is what everybody uh-huh. says. But if you read what the internet says, nobody's pumped. So does that make the NFL pumped? Who knows? What we do know is that these two teams, one of them, leading the NFC all year to a number one seed in a revenge tour after everybody getting hurt in the first quarter of the NFC Championship last year. Being dominant from start to finish with a little bit of a hiccup in the middle when Debo and Trent Williams were injured. Mm -hmm. But immediately afterwards, this man, the game manager of all game managers in his second year, alongside that big brain of Kyle Shanahan, are going to have some special things in store. Because there's videos hitting the internet of George Kittle from the last Super Bowl, where Jimmy G was their quarterback, if you do recall, and they had to lead over the Kansas City Chiefs, where George Kittle, kind of crying and emotional at the end of the game, saying, this is not the last time I'm going to be here. This is not the last time I'm going to be here. Well, he's back taking on a team that has basically made the home Mm -hmm. of the Super Bowl. And they'll be playing in a postseason game in Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas before the Raiders will be playing in a postseason game in Las Vegas in Allegiant Stadium. I think it's going to be a fantastic game. The lead-up is going to be bananas, and we'll be there every step of the way. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Good-looking dog on the chest call, man. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I wore it just because, you know, Kansas City Chiefs were dogs. I doubted them. I thought the Ravens were going to do it, and it was kind of cool watching it back, as you said, for the last five Super Bowls. New England did that 2014 and 2018, and it was on the other side for myself watching it, what you guys got to experience watching New England. Like, just the first drive, and Gumpy mentioned this before the show, the first drive, Kansas City just walking down the field mm-hmm. and scoring, it was, oh, okay. 
So this is what it is like to not root for the team that is always going to end up either in the championship game on, you know, conference championship Sunday or the Super Bowl. And it's sweet to watch. Like, I, I think it's cool to at least appreciate Mahomes, Reed, Kelsey, Chris Jones, all those guys, how amazing it is that they've done it again. And obviously with the Taylor Swift stuff, you know, people don't love What's that. the Taylor Swift stuff? The most successful woman on earth right now yeah. happens to be dating the greatest tight end of all time who's on the current dynasty. Why is everybody so mad about it? I don't get it. Why is everybody so Tired mad about it? it? I'm annoying. sick of being I'm sick of people being mad about it. Yes. You know what I, yeah, I like it's annoying. I, I it, what are we even talking about? I love it. And if you see I know that's one half of the hammer. God. Cowboys Town Diggs. You love that type of stuff. You're not ready to not scared to stir it up a little bit in those particular parts of the world. But I don't fully understand. Now at the beginning I can see it. Sure. Oh, she's releasing a movie? Yeah. Oh, he's on 14 sure. commercials? Yep. Oh, we're getting worked right now? The NFL, a bunch of bums showcasing, shoving it down our throats. Right. I'm sick of seeing it. Every commercial, him. Every game, her. We're done. I could see that. I could very... But did you see them after the game yesterday? Yeah, yeah that I mean, was... that's what I was saying. I loved. Hey, I'm... they're an actual. Hey, they love each other. Oh, yeah. They love they're an actual very love. I am so happy that the world got to see that and that I think. I don't want to say I told you so because in sports media, a lot of people say that and then they say a lot of things that are wrong and they just refuse <laughs> to chit chat about those. And we are certainly no different than everybody else. But from the very beginning, I thought to myself, these two might be perfect for each other. Mm -hmm. These two might be perfect for each other. And then as you see it kind of unravel, I think he thanked her obviously for being a big part of the run. They were sure. kissing. She yeah. got a chance to give him big hug with his pads on. Yeah, she got to see him go give a speech. She gave a shout out to Andy Reid. She dapped up Tony Romo. Yeah. It's like Taylor's a part mm -hmm. of the football world now. This is good news, not bad news, but a lot of people are. We're going to say, you know, well, how many times is CBS going to show Taylor Swift at that Super Bowl? Well, she is a global phenomenon. Yep. Yeah. She's selling out stadiums in all these countries in which it's their first game they're watching every single year. I assume they're going to show Taylor a lot. What bit? I assume it's going to get real loud. But I assume that this Kansas City Chiefs team is going to somehow have a plan to win the game. Yeah. I, one of the Chiefs' biggest believers has actually had to make up excuses to a nine-year yep. NFL vet. Mm -hmm. A man with a high football IQ. Host of our program every single Monday through Wednesday, Derek Shea Butler. I've had to make up excuses throughout this year about this Kansas City Chiefs team. I feel like I'm one of the biggest supporters of this Kansas City Chiefs mm -hmm. team just because to what you were kind of saying there about, like, I enjoy watching greats be great. Yeah. Because the amount of commitment that it takes to be great, no matter how easy anybody makes it, the amount of commitment is admirable for anybody that makes it to the top. Now, not every human that makes it to the top is an admirable human being, but I'm talking about the road that it took to get to the top of the mountain is always going to be a difficult one, even if people make it look easy. So the amount of work that Andy Reid has put in for football, obviously. Patrick Mahomes, same damn thing. Travis Kelsey, same damn thing. Chris Jones, same thing. Even though he held out mm -hmm. and everybody could think some things, like the amount of work it yeah. takes to get to that standpoint. Because you're just a human at the end of the day. Now, granted, certain gifts are bestowed upon numerous people that they aren't upon others, but you have to work to get there. So I enjoy watching the greats be great. I appreciate it learning about why the greats are great. So I am a huge fan of dynasties when people get going, well, you're a bandwagoner. It's like, no, still love the Penguins. You know, we were once a dynasty and we're mm -hmm, kind of dead. Sure. But I enjoy watching greatness. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. I appreciate it. I think the world needs more of it. I think we're on our way to getting more of it. So whenever I see this great team that I've beloved, uh, I've fallen in love with watching and learning about do terrible, it's like, I don't want to believe it. Mm -hmm. Like whenever they were a terrible football Football team. I'm like, Pastor Brown was sick. Yeah. Well, the guy had the flu. Mm -hmm. What do you expect from him? Wind. Well, there's 40 mile an hour winds. How is mm -hmm. he supposed to throw the ball anyway? Travis Kelsey dropping the ball. He sticks his ear and then 30 mile an hour winds. It's right over there. Of course they're going to drop this. They're humans at the end of the day. I didn't expect them to be able to beat Baltimore. You said whenever you're watching it and they walk right down the field in the first series, I was thinking the same thing. Andy Reid was like, oh, Mike McDonald, that's cute. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're the, exactly. You're the genius, huh? Your defense is just so incredible. And then they just have a plan clearly to go down. Now, that Baltimore Ravens defense, second half, shut it down, mm -hmm. lock it down, not enough because what the Kansas City Chiefs defense did to the Baltimore Ravens offense, mm -hmm. phenomenal. But I didn't think the Chiefs were going to be able to do it. I didn't think they were going to be able to make it to the Super Bowl. I didn't think they were going to be able to win the AFC Championship again. And then you see these plays and it's like, why did I ever doubt them? The Chiefs is still the Chiefs. What did we learn about the Chiefs yesterday? And why did seemingly, and I, I would put myself in a category of, I wouldn't rob a bank to watch the Kansas City Chiefs. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. But they did go into the bank. Got a big win, saw a couple oh, good Robert. tweets about that. Shot yep. to Drew Tranquil, I believe, and MVS and the others. Yep. But then, like, I didn't have faith in them. 
I don't know if anybody did. And that's just all they needed, maybe? What, why do you think the Chiefs is still the Chiefs? And do you think they have a chance against this Niners team? Obviously, yes, they have a chance against anybody. Yeah, I know this line. I think it opened up the Super Bowl line initially, if, like three points. Two and a half. Okay, two and a half, and now it's down to one. So that would be three weeks in a row. Mahomes would still be an underdog. So mm-hmm. for some reason, I guess the books still aren't believing in it. But like you said, once that game started, I think he came out was like completed his first 10 or 11 passes. Yep. It was almost like the term we've been hearing thrown around a lot, a game manager. For like Mahomes was that a lot of this playoffs taking care of the ball Whoa. and then them, them being special when he need to be like that throw to Travis Kelsey oh, touch that when back he was shoulder tack- oh no the touchdown Kyle Hamilton is in his pocket great position back shoulder on his back hip the only place you could put that ball Travis Kelsey showed up you know there's a lot said about him obviously with Taylor Swift and all the commercials and everything going on wasn't having his best year. As the season started to wind down, once it got to playoff mode, playoff. Travis Kelsey, I think he was the MVP of the game yesterday, to your point. The Ravens did lock it down in the second half. Um, but just no mistakes, really. This one. From, yeah. Yeah. But this yeah. one. Yep. Ridiculous. Watch this one, yeah. D, but Watch his catch. Watch his throw. These no. two. Just like, like, how did any of us bet against those two? It's the goat to the goat. And you saw it was a That's little, backyard football. Third yeah. down. A little spiciness uh, pregame with, uh, with Justin Tucker. But, I mean, th- those guys, you know, they're phenomenal. And, and Kelsey, uh, Reed, obviously, Mahomes, and then Spags. I mean, Spags, you know, obviously they've been a really probably a top three defense all year long. And I think that unit took pride in saying, hey, we're going to be the best defense on the field um, today. And uh, they made they made Le- Lamar pretty much think it up. You there. you said uh-huh. that uh, Patrick Mahomes had to manage the game. Yeah. And everybody's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> not only in here, but watching. <laughs> because obviously Patrick Mahomes already on the Mount Rushmore in like everybody's oh, yeah. eyes. He actually gave an answer in a press conference about having to learn how to play whenever Spags' defense gets rolling. Mm-hmm. He's like, I've actually had to evolve this year and learn, like, hey, be safe with the ball. Don't As long as we don't turn the ball over right now, with the way our defense is playing, we're going to be in this yep. game. So he's even continuing to develop, but also realizing that what they have on the other side of the ball is a weapon. Oh, Ty, obviously the Packers have been so dominant on the offensive side of the ball. Defense very rarely has been able to keep up. It's always been a problem. You have one thing, mm-hmm. you don't have the other. You have peanut butter, but for some reason we never have any damn grape jelly. Right. There's people that do a lot of cherry jelly, by the way. Cherry? Red, it's a red jelly. Those yeah. people, those, those people kill people. Strawberry, Strawberry Jam. Marks. Strawberry Strawberry Jam. Is that Bill? Strawberry is good. I'm a purple. I, yeah, I'm going for yeah. the purple, purple jelly. Every yeah. single. Yeah. Give me the, squeeze, give me the squeezable Welch. Yeah. Please. But if you're a Chiefs fan, coming out of that game, and in the second half offense did next to nothing, mm-hmm. and we still win, it's like, oh, maybe our team's more complete than it's been uh-huh. for the beginning of this entire dynasty. And obviously, Spags is a big reason why. But they're all playing on a string. They're phenomenal. What they've done the last two weeks in this playoffs, the lightest, the brightest of lights, it's like if the, when the Packers have a defense, you feel good. Mm-hmm. They have a great – they have a championship defense in Kansas City, something that they haven't had. Should we – is this – are they only starting with this? Because Spag's name is not up for any head coaching jobs. No. So he's back, obviously. Andy Reid is. is obviously back. It's like, are the, are the Chiefs somehow only getting better right now in the middle of this dynasty? It feels like that's the case. Yeah, and it's, I mean, we, we talk about it all the time. I don't know why, like, you just got to stop betting against Mahomes. Like, it, it, and it's tough because when we, we talk about the, the season, obviously, and we're in it every single day, so you need to find new stuff mm-hmm. to kind of overreact to and week by week things look so different but it's one of those things where when you've been to four Super Bowls in five years like as a fan yeah a week 13 loss and then a week 14 loss like you go crazy and it's like hey this isn't the same team like you think Mahomes and Kelsey and all those other guys and Andy Reid are you know fretting about losing in week 13 against the Raiders or whenever it was and everyone's acting like the sky's falling it's like hey guess what when the playoffs get here like We've been here before, and we've seen that with some of these other teams in the playoffs right now. I think it's easy to discount how much having, having you know, b- having been there before, like that matters. Like Lions, young team; Packers, young team. And in those moments where mm-hmm. you absolutely need a guy to kind of set, set, step up and and carry them, they have Mahomes, they have Kelsey, they have these guys who have all this playoff experience. Like that shit matters a lot. Yeah. So that's championship pedigree, exactly. Oh, yeah. And I think it was on display if you yeah. watch, you know, two personal fouls. On one drive, yeah. right before half. When you watch Zay Flowers, mm-hmm. right, what happens with Zay, and he's young and going to be a superstar in the league. Man. This is not a knock at all. He did not have his best day both. Uh, on, I mean, he had a huge day, but yeah. he didn't have his best day on the field. But as player in the NFL, did not have his best day. Adding insult to injury, actually, hurting his finger mm-hmm. on the sideline, getting pissed off about what he messed up on the field is like, one of those things that he will have to hopefully continue to grow through. But, like, yeah, flexing over top of a guy 
after making a huge play, the fourth huge or second huge play of the game for your team. Mm-hmm. I think fourth completion to a wide receiver <laughs> yeah, in the entire goes. game at the wow. time in like the third quarter. It's like what he did, to get, the guy was on his leg. I think refs are cool with him pushing him off, yeah. even though that was seemingly a bit egregious. Yes. But then clearly standing over top of him, yeah. flexing and throwing the ball. Yeah. Like that is what they made the rule for. That that is literally what they let the boys tone is how I feel mm-hmm. about everything. Believe me. I'm a big celebrate shit talk guy. But the people that are like super upset about that particular penalty being called, it's like the NFL will stand behind calling that every single time. You threw the ball yeah, at the yeah. guy, Damn, it flexed over down. top of him, and you did an extra shove. I'm cool with it. Would like to let it if I'm if I'm the commissioner of the NFL, I'm like, yeah, what the, hey, listen, sure. if you want to get into the fire, if you want to get into the kitchen, it might get a little hot sometimes. Like that's the case. But that's literally what they made the rule for, mm-hmm. was for that exact moment there. So it's like those little moments. And obviously Van Noy's a champion, him coming in there hitting that thing. It's like yeah. there's like those little moments that for some reason the Chiefs never get caught up in mm-hmm. in the big moments. But the people they're playing against are. That's the difference, I yeah. think. And it, Bill Bill Cower talks about it a lot, like towing that line. And you can tell mm-hmm. how how Kelsey came out the gate, you know, and it was a lot of his celebrations were kind of, you know, hey, it's a first down. It's going to be right in your face, but I'm not going to look at you, but it's going to be a first down. It's some bump in the one Van Noy got in there late. Um, obviously, the clothesline, that was a bad one. But, yeah, it was the, the Roquan, the late personal foul. Uh, it was just, like you said, that championship pedigree. That's what separated them. The Ravens, we talked about the young core, their coaching staff. No, but the refs gave them the game. No, no. Yeah, it's rigged. A lot of people. I, yeah. it, it was some, it's rigged. Yeah, I'm sure that's all over there now. But it was, oh, yeah. it was bad calls on both sides. It was good calls. It was, I don't think the refs – the Chiefs went out and won this game. You know, you, offensively, defensively, it was a, it was a knockdown, drag out. Um, the the fumble, obviously, with Jay Flowers. Oh, I mean, the forced fumble, Snead, I forgot about that. unbelievable play by LeJarrius Snead. Should have been a first-team All-Pro, but that's what you talk about defensive meeting all the time, defending every blade of grass, him coming over, punching that ball out. That was huge. Obviously, the turnover, the interception, uh, Deion Bush came in there. He's only in there because of injury, basically. A lot of guys got banged up. He's going back to another Super Bowl. So those big splash, the strip sack on Lamar, yep. those big splash plays is what uh, separated the Chiefs um, yesterday. Massive play. And also, if you're losing a fumble at the half-yard line like that, Ooh. I mean, football gods are also potentially yeah. Yeah, not on working that. a little bit against uh-huh. you. You know, Because that could have been a touchdown. For sure. And same reaction. Or it could have been half-yard short. Oh, it's going the other way. So, like, I think there's a lot of that. Ooh. The immediate blame of the refs, though, with the Kansas City Chiefs, because now they're marketing and people are promoting how much money Taylor Swift has brought in and advertising mm-hmm. yeah. and stuff. Like, obviously, that all is nice fodder to add into it. My biggest issue with the way this game was officiated is in last weekend's games, the refs weren't even a part of it. Yeah. Refs just let the boys play. Mm -hmm. Felt like they got to a point in this particular game where Sean Smith and them were like, we got to let people know we're here. Mm -hmm. Start calling stuff, calling stuff. Now, was there actual penalties happening? Yes, probably. But it just felt like they called a lot more than what happened last week. And last week was applauded by everybody. Oh, yeah. Like, hey, great oh, yeah. consistency on doing that entire thing. Then there were some fake stats that you could certainly find working against Sean Smith going into <laughs> the game, obviously, by you know other analytic mm-hmm. human beings on the internet who we appreciate and respect, but also not true all the time, which is the stats thing. You know, right. Which Bingo. is the stat, unless it's 100% yeah. to zero. I took a Chiefs touchdown off the board. Rice. End of the half. Oh, end of the half. Two, mm-hmm. I mean, that was ridiculous. Two holding calls. It's like that's a pretty, that's a pretty massive <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah. You you think they're just like, oh, well, it's all right. We'll make up for it in the second half. We'll we'll screw them now, right before half, and then second half we'll make up for them. It's like some refs are just bad. Yeah. Like some refs are just bad mm-hmm. refs, and everybody's thinking that they're so educated and so good at their jobs, of course, that they're actually cooking it for some. It's like. No, I think you're going the complete wrong way in the respect level for some of these refs. I think it needs to head back the different direction. But let's go to the next game. Oh, man. The brand new Lions. We're ready for the moment. Yeah. Watching them come out. Oh. J-Mo shot out of a gun. Unreal. Minute 42 seconds into the game already. 7 nothing for the Detroit Lions. I want to put McKenzie down <laughs> to sleep. I want to put the baby down to bed. Came back up. Minute 42 in. Already 7 nothing. Holy hell. What did I miss? Oh, three plays. Yeah. I missed three plays. One of them being one of the most explosive end rounds I've seen in some time with some missed tackle and some lack of discipline from the mm-hmm. Niners defense mm-hmm. getting got pretty much. A great play design by Ben Johnson mm-hmm. where they actually have guard pull 
away from where J-Mo ends up at. Bosa crashes. Boom. Now, all of a sudden, we have an edge, and J-Mo is electrifying. Then you get all the way to halftime 24-7. I mean, it's like the Detroit Lions are headed to the Super Bowl. Here we go. I texted Evan Fox. Holy shit. Yeah. The brand new Lions are going to the Super Bowl. Yep. <laughs> Think about Foxy. Oh. All week at Super Bowl. Oh, my God. The amount of Detroit Lions that are coming through the, mm -hmm. the radio row where we'll be out you there. In Foxy, Vegas. we love you. <laughs> the, the people that are joining the show that maybe have watched the show that we don't know watch the show, which I learned a lot of people watch our show this past weekend, which I, hey, thank you. Shout Just out. like I told you in real life, you should not be watching this show. But people come in, the amount of like, so happy for you, Foxy, yeah. mm -hmm. from like people that we couldn't even expect right now oh, to boy. come in there and do it. That was all on deck. Oh, yeah. I oh. saw all that happen in a halftime. 24-7, what Journey's performing, uh -huh. you know, out, out uh -huh. in Santa Clara. Yep. I'm seeing, oh, my God, Foxy's about to have the greatest Super Bowl of all time. Buddy. Man. Damn. Why'd we all forget that this is what Brock Purdy does? Yeah. In the biggest moment, whenever he is doubted mm -hmm. or whenever there is no chance or no possibility of something happening, this is when Brock Purdy shows up. This is the trait that Brock Purdy has that all these people that want to bury him for being a game manager just seem to leave out of the convo. He has it. What is it? How do you describe it? Well, whenever something is important, this dude's going to show up. That is what Brock Purdy has done literally since he was dropped into the NFL week eight, week nine, whatever it was last season as the last pick in the draft. Down 24-7. You're out of it. Okay, let me thread a needle to Debo 20 yards down the field. Let me lead a comeback. Let me start running. 51 yards rushing yeah. in the second half. Would end up at 48 because he took a knee with one second left, like three yards back. Don't know why he did that. Almost had a scrum for the boys. But Brock Purdy is always showing up whenever he has to. And that is a thing that not everybody has. Mm -hmm. That is something that normally... We, as soon as we find out somebody's got it, it's like, all right, well, here's one. Going to go. Everybody that's ever been talked about in that upper tier of athleticism in every single sport. Now, that was on purpose. Mm -hmm. Throws it off a guy's face. Mm -hmm. Smart. 30, 45 yards down the field. Great job. Well, that was momentum. That was right after the fourth down. They didn't Brandon Ayuk is a beast. Yeah, yeah. Dog. Absolute dog. And we'll talk about the momentum mm -hmm. deniers having a rough night last night. <laughs> I don't know what they're even digging deep into to explain what yeah. happened after going for it on fourth down. What? 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 All those types of things. And then the game swinging the complete opposite direction. And then immediately after, Nick Bosa is asked, hey, was there a moment in the game when you think it all changed? Uh, when they went for it on that fourth. Really felt good for us. <laughs> yeah. Though, any other way, it was Bosa's exact answer. But then the Niners do what the Niners have done, and they just put it away. Yep. Yep. Now, some suspect decisions were made by Dan Campbell, the head coach of the Detroit Lions. And Brock Purdy's a dog. He looked fast, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's fast. moving. Well, well, sneaky athlete. He is yeah. sneaky athlete. He's a sneaky athlete, isn't he? Hard, sneaky hard speed. Yep. See, just like this guy right here, Christian McCaffrey. Sneaky athlete. Very sneaky. Sneaky mm -hmm. speed. Mm -hmm. something about First one in, last one out. Lunch pail guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Coach's son, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, that whole, mm -hmm. those guys, they have it. The Dan Campbell decision's late. Now, I saw a lot of people that aren't Detroit Lions fans calling him big dumb dipshit. Sure. This doofus that said he was going to gnaw on kneecaps in his opening press conference in the biggest moment proved exactly what we all said about this guy. This meathead ain't going to be able to do it. I would like to say that that particular meathead lived by the sword and died by the same sword. That's Amen. Right. He built a culture on consistency. He said, this is who we're going to be. We are going to be the group that are going to go a little bit harder, a little bit longer. Right. We're going to think a little bit deeper. And he remained true to who he had been all season in the biggest moments. The only one that made no sense, well, two. The only two that made no sense to me at all. Down three, fourth quarter, chip shot field goal range. We tie the game. Yes, yes Just for sure. I, in my head. In my head, we tie the game there. So I think at the end of the game then, down 10 when he's driving down there, you're going to have to kick an onside kick regardless. No matter what. Once you get in the field goal range, you make that a seven-point game all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. So there's two things that I personally disagree with. Everything else is just like, that's Dan Campbell football. Like right here, I mean, we, 
should kick on first and goal even. Like like whenever, just get a get three points on the board, make that into a one touchdown. He's got to get that, into game that, there. That tight end, the run, got to get in there. Yeah, the tight end that's never caught a football, got to get in all season, running out of bounds, be an athlete. But also, that's probably why he hasn't caught a football <laughs> potentially all season. He is in the NFL, great play. But it's like, aside from those two, where I'm completely confused by, everything else was just Dan Campbell playing Dan Campbell football. Yep. The Detroit Lions fans, how do you feel about it? You guys are all calling a big dumb dipshit or like the rest of the world, or what's happening there? Not me, Pat. I absolutely love not. that he is aggressive. I love that he goes for it. And most importantly, if I've learned anything from former NFL players like yourself, like D-Butt, like AJ, like anyone that's been on this show, the number one thing they want out of their coach is consistency. And he's been consistently going for it, and he's been consistently aggressive all season long. And guess what? He trusted his players, and they didn't make the plays. Reynolds could have caught that ball. Oh. J-Mo had a deep ball he could have caught. Like, there was a lot of plays we just didn't make. So I, I don't blame MCDC. I don't think the players are going to blame MCDC. I love what he did. It just didn't work out. And we said at some point, this is all going to come and bite him in the ass. I just didn't think it was going to be in the second half of the NFC Championship game. And you talked about that text you sent me. And it was at halftime, and I responded to you. I said, Pat. <laughs> a lot of ball left, yeah, all right? Yeah, yeah. One play at a time because I've seen a thousand of these games. Whoa, and whoa, I've this ain't seen... same old Lions. No, no, it's not. What? It's not. You but... haven't seen a thousand And the difference seen. between the same old Lions and the brand new Lions is the fact that Dan Campbell goes for it and he trusts his team and he tries to put teams away. That's the difference. Same old Lions send kicker out there, miss kick. Yeah. Yes. Block kick. Yeah, block. And I can't live with that. Something like that. That's the one I can't live with. If he got scared, if he tucked his tail and and he said, we got to kick these field goals. We're not going to go for it like we did all season. That got us to this position. If we lose the game and kick those field goals, I absolutely cannot deal with that. So I'm okay with how we lost, but I am certainly Ugh. bummed out. Yeah, <laughs> you're not the only ones bummed out. Dan Campbell spoke uh, afterwards in this minute 10 or so, I think is a nice little wrap on everything that he had to say. Right here. Sometimes you can always say so much, you got to live it, unfortunately. And you got to get your heart ripped out, which we did. And it's a lesson learned. And look, I told those guys, this may have been our only shot. Do I think that? No. Do I believe that? No. However, I, I know how hard it is to get here. I, I'm well aware. And it'll be, it's going to be twice as hard to get back to this point next year than it was this year. That's, mm -hmm. that's the reality. And if we don't have the same hunger and the same work, which is a whole other thing, once we get the off season, um, then we got no shot of getting back here. I don't care how much better we get or what we add or what we drive. It's irrelevant. Um, it's going to be tough. Everybody in our division is going to be loaded back up, and uh, you know you're not hiding from anybody anymore. Everybody's going to want a piece of you, and uh, which is fine, you know, which is fine. But um, so it's hard. You want to make the most of every opportunity, and we we had an opportunity, and we just couldn't close it out. It's, it does. It stings. It stings. My rookie year, we were completely undefeated until we chose to lose. And I say we loosely. I was the punter. <laughs> okay, I was there. I just happened to be. I didn't even know how to punt, to be honest with you, but I was there. We go 14-0, and 0, choose to lose the last two games, number one seed, go all the way to the Super Bowl. We lose to Drew Brees and his dumb baby. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody's seen it. Mm -hmm. We did it. I had the lead at halftime. Yeah. Thought we were, they hit an onside ambush, surprise, surprise onside kick. Thomas Morris said it. it's perfect. They get it. They said it was our ball, allegedly from under the pile, but then it ended up being their ball. Not, nobody cares. <laughs> Pick six happens. We lose the game. Two years later, we we're almost completely defeated. Okay, until we got really lucky and Dan Rolofsky comes in at the end of the year and almost wins us out of Andrew Luck into RG3. Yeah. Which win -win. would have been yeah. a winner regardless of that. We wouldn't have Gruden on. <laughs> yeah. We wouldn't have Jay Gruden <laughs> yeah, coaching. You know? but, but to his point, and I don't think his culture, he said, I think we'll be back. But it's very difficult. After that Super Bowl loss, I'm 23 years old, 22 years old, 23 years old, walking in that locker room. Bomb dot. Mm -hmm. We lost the Super Bowl. But also, like, in Super Bowl, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, this is sure. here. Most miserable room I've ever seen in my entire life. 
because everybody in there understood very much so that the team's going to be very different next year. These same guys aren't going to be here. The same balls that bounced your way all year, potentially. Are they going to bounce the same way next year? How about the luck of injuries on who got hurt, who didn't get hurt? Is that going to happen mm -hmm. again next year? How about whenever the offense just found a groove for like 10 weeks straight and just were unstoppable? Is that going to happen again next year? How about no defensive systems being able to stop the offense that we had this year, this whole offseason with defense coordinators? Are they going to be able to figure out what we were doing? Like, There's just so many question marks. So the fact that the Patriots yeah. and now the Chiefs have been able to do this is something that is very abnormal. It is not at all. So I appreciate that MCDC is taking that route whenever he's talking to his team yeah. and when he's talking to the press conference because it's very real. Yeah. But And obviously, I've never went back to the Super Bowl. Sure. Mm. Kicked one off, lost one, never went back ever again except for to say dumb stuff in the microphones. And that's reality for a lot of teams that aren't the Patriots and that aren't Kansas City Chiefs. I appreciate MCDC acknowledging that. Yeah, and I, I appreciate, you know, Foxy, and I'm sure a lot of the Lions fans probably, probably feel the same way. You know, if we're going to go out, we're going to go out how we've been swinging, you know, all, all season, all playoffs long. I get it. Uh, objectively, as just a fan of the game, you know, you, you took the three points to make it a three-possession uh, three game in the first half. It was a point in the, in the third quarter where you could have done the same thing. So I understand being aggressive and, and trying to get the most out of every possession, but also understanding how the game is going. You know, your offense, your, everything was rolling your way the first half. It wasn't going that way in the second half. Take those points, live to see another. Even when you take that point, when you take that field goal, you got to kick it off as well. And usually it's going to be a 25. You got to go 75 yards to score. When you don't, that momentum, which a lot of people say is fake, I believe is real, is going to swing the other direction. So it's tough, man. But, I mean, unbelievable season. To his point, he's always been honest. He's always, you know, worn his heart on his sleeve. And he said, hey, we may not be here again. We talked about it a few weeks ago when the Packers, uh, I think, were about to play the Niners. You know, house money. Hey, we're young. Same thing with C.J. Stroud and the Texans. You just never know because of all those things you mentioned, injuries, uh, team, the camaraderie, luck. all those different things. Yeah, uh -huh. luck. All of the Coach. ball bouncing your way. Um, everything was going their way. It was tough to see him go out like that. But 49ers, once again, just made the plays. Um, once again, to Foxy's point, the players were in position to make those plays on the fourth down, even the third downs of some of those drives. So it's tough to go, but that's, that's, that's football, baby. Hey, it is football. It yeah. is the beautiful game. Mm -hmm. You know, I know they call that soccer, mm -hmm. but did you see the differing emotions that yesterday caused? Oh, yeah. 35,000 people in Ford Field. Oh, oh yeah. That place so is packed. 35,000 people at Ford Field. Just, sold out in like five hours, they said. They sold those tickets or they gave those tickets away? Uh, I think it was free, but yeah. Anyways, you had to somehow mm -hmm. approve. Sitting on chairs this big, mm. very uncomfortable to watch TVs and jumbotrons mm -hmm. of your team to have that moment together. The city getting a chance to experience each other and success, hopefully, one last time. It's like, it's a beautiful... It is a beautiful sport. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was fantastic. And some stories are going to come to an end in a very negative way. And all these people were bumped <laughs> out. Yeah. Yes. Oh, they watched God. the third quarter happen. Uh, that had not happened to them all year. Hembo sent me some stats about how and what was different about this particular Lions game here. Um, the Lions unraveled in the third quarter with their su first Super Bowl appearance in sight, says Purdy, oh, or says Hembo. Jeez, Hembo. Okay. Relax. Outscored 17-0. <laughs> Which in the third quarter, which is their worst point differential in a quarter of this entire season. Oh, no. They were outgained 170 yards to 42. Yeah. Their second worst yards differential in a quarter mm -hmm. this entire season. Lost fumble. That was their first turnover this postseason. Yep. Two drop passes on third and fourth down. Tied for their most in a game for the entire season. Yeah. In one quarter. That third quarter from hell is something that I assume MCDC is going to be talking about all uh -huh. offseason. Yep. They'll come back stronger. But the reason why it happened is because that Niners team is for real. Yeah. yeah. That Niners team is a buzzsaw. They have to figure out how to wake up, though. Oh, yeah. They have to figure out how Two to wake up a lot faster. Um, but I assume they are completely okay with how that game went because in the end they got a chance to test their resolve a little bit more. They got a chance to do some stuff. And Brock Purdy did what Brock Purdy does, which is manage the game beautifully. That's mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Fred Warner spoke after the game to the media. Here's what he had to say about Brock Purdy. Heck of a game manager. Wow. Manage the heck out of that game, boy. <laughs> he the reason we're going to have a chance to win us a ring. I love him. Here's uh, Bosa talking about Purdy after the game. I don't pay attention to the media much, but whoever's talking about Brock Purdy... 
Well, what, what do you have now? Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> listen. And what message do you feel like Brock Purdy sent with this type of game? He's the best game manager in the league. Josina Anderson, obviously, <laughs> with the interview. And then here's Juszczyk tweeting mm -hmm. this morning about it. Amazing how Brock Purdy managed to find me. So they're taking this game manager thing and turning it into a full conversation. Yeah. Okay, if he's a game manager, then he's the greatest of all time. Alex Smith on NFL Sunday Countdown uh, yesterday said, as the head of the NFL game yeah. manager <laughs> nice. committee. He said he's not well, he's not one of us. Love Basically that. talk about Brock Purdy being a game changer as opposed to a game manager. But all the Niners obviously getting Purdy's back is something that's awesome mm -hmm. to watch. Joining us now is senior NFL insider at ESPN. I don't know what news he's going to have today, but I'm excited to hear whatever it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Shafter. Yay, Shafter. Hey. Gentlemen, what's going on? Shafty, let's start with what we were just chatting about there. Obviously, Brock Purdy is a guy who, for some reason, has a lot of people in their field feelings of anger about him having the success that he's having. And yesterday he proved once again he's a guy. For the Niners, though, he's a guy that only costs like 800000 bucks. So they're able to do a lot of things with that roster. How often do you think Lynch and Shanahan are projecting into the future for the roster when they know they got a couple years left of Brock Purdy being cheap here? And what are your thoughts on the Brock Purdy experiment that has taken place over there in San Francisco? Well, the fact that he creates financial flexibility for them over the next couple of years is just an added bonus on top of the quarterback that he is, which is a starting quarterback in the NFL, which is a top 12 quarterback, which is a quarterback who is perfect for Kyle Shanahan and that system. And I have not bought into that Brock Purdy talk about him not being good enough at all from the moment that he played in the preseason a couple of years ago. He stood out. He shined. He proved that he was different, and he's had a couple of down moments in recent weeks. But the fact of the matter is when the games have been on the line, uh, this guy's delivered. He has delivered every time. They believe in him. He's their quarterback. They're moving forward with him. And that contractual stuff that you're talking about, that's an added bonus that allows you to go make Nick Bosa the highest-paid defensive player and go trade for Chase. You can do all kinds of things that you might not have to, because you're paying your quarterback $45, $50 plus million dollars a year. They don't have to do that with him. They get spread out that money. So there's a real window for this team with him while he's on his rookie contract. But he's going to get paid too in time. And once he does, then some of the other options of flexibility dry up. This is much like the Legion of Boom era with the Seattle Seahawks with Russell Wilson, the Los Angeles yeah. Rams era with Jared Goff. Mm -hmm. When he was on a rookie contract, they were able to pay everybody. This has shown success in the past. And then whenever you pay your quarterback, you got to do salary cap gymnastics and figure out how to keep right. a roster that's good enough to go in, like what Patrick Mahomes has done after getting paid. Well, Pat, will you go ahead. Wait, 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 wait. When you take a rookie quarterback, it is the ultimate gamble. And if it hits, your team is set. The Houston Texans for the next three years, are going to be able to have advantages that no other team has because they're going to have C.J. Stroud under contract and they're going to be able to go out and get talent to surround him with because he's on his rookie deal. And so the Houston Texans become a Super Bowl favorite the next few years. Not to put any pressure, but that's how quickly it changes if you hit on a rookie quarterback. Not only do you get the benefit of him playing well, but you get the benefit of his contract, which is huge. In this day and age, where the top quarterbacks are being paid in excess of 45, 50 plus million dollars a year, and you don't have to, and you can't pay your rookie quarterback that amount of money. So the Niners are in that window right now. Uh, the Chiefs had it for a while with Mahomes. The Bengals had it with Burrow. Yeah. The Chargers had it with Herbert. Like all these teams have had that window wow, so with those cool. guys on a rookie contract. If the guy shows he can play early on, you got two, three years of incredible opportunities and you want to try to take advantage of it while you can then some teams have some most teams haven't and to your point there there's only one team out of those three uh, four that you talked about there that didn't get a chance to experience a super bowl on those rookie contracts and that'd be the chargers that's why your guy Har harbaugh needs to save their souls right, over there. save yeah. their souls over there because that is a real benefit it is john lynch is looking at it walks into his office and sees whatever dry erase board of his salary cap 
and he sees the quarterback position as one of the smallest on the entire team. And he goes, thank God, because they had Jimmy G, yep. let alone Trey Lance. Well, that would have been a third, mm-hmm. number three overall, let alone a conversation happening right now. I think you're uh, taking a couple flashes yeah. there. Let's stay with the San Francisco 49ers, though. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, Shefty, moving forward. The the only injury thing I, I noticed was uh, Christian McCaffrey on, uh, I think it was his last carry of the game down the right sideline. He landed on his neck. Uh, I don't know if he came back in or not. Have we heard anything yet as far as as the the neck injury there? Twice almost. It was a nasty fall, and you could see that he was shaken up by it at the time. I don't think it's going to be an issue for the Super Bowl. I don't know whether he was concussed. I don't know if he ever went into the blue medical tent or whatever it may be. I promise you Christian McCaffrey is going to be out there for the Super Bowl, despite that fall on his neck and head that was – Rather scary looking at the time. Yeah, very scary looking. And I saw him working on his neck, and obviously yeah. it looked very painful. And him tapping out that close to potentially pick up a third touchdown, yeah. another whole mm-hmm. conversation. Let's go to the other game that took place between the Chiefs and the Ravens. So now, you know, every conversation is that the NFL rigged this to get Taylor Swift in the Super mm-hmm. Bowl. What do you say, Jeffrey? <laughs> Absolutely, it was rigged. I mean, come on. You Put even the say they're going to clip that right oh, there. Yeah. They're going to clip yeah. that. Adam Schefter, <laughs> look, because your name tag's even right underneath it. Uh-huh. Adam Schefter, ESPN senior NFL insider. Oh, they definitely rigged it, but none of it, it was rigged. It was rigged. It, oh, had nothing, it, had, it had nothing to do with Patrick Mahomes. It had nothing to do with Travis Kelsey. Mm-hmm. It had nothing to do with Andy Reid. Nothing to do with the way that this Spags. champion has played. It had everything to do with the NFL script writers and them wanting to make sure that they got. Taylor Swift back from her concert in Tokyo to be in the stadium in Las Vegas in time for the Super Bowl because the ratings weren't going to be high enough. So they wanted to make sure (laughs) they're even higher for the Super Bowl. And they wanted to bring just a little extra juice to a game that, frankly, was just a a flat matchup. So, yes, it worked out very well. And the NFL was able to manage to rig the game. And now Taylor Swift will be there. It's great. Super Bowl, kind of a dud this year. Mm -hmm. Kind of a dud. It's a Super Bowl, but is it? Yeah. You know, what are we? Great Taylor things. Swift. Imagine. Yeah, that's right. how. Okay. So now we need. Okay. It is wild, dude. It is. That's how successful the NFL is, though. And that's how passionate fans are. That they'll get themselves to that point. Like, there's people with everything you just said right there who are like, yes, 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 mm-hmm. yes exactly. all the way in on it. And when you see some, some calls get made at certain times, obviously that adds to the fodder. But I am very pumped that this dynasty. You getting news there? Uh, no. no. Uh, but remember, you also told us that the passing of the torch was between J.J. <laughs> yeah. McCarthy. and yeah. right. So you will lie literally right through those teeth. <laughs> right through us. <laughs> so you, we always have to kind of read your body language to see if you're telling the truth or not. And we've talked to numerous people about this. We actually even got a chance to talk to Nate Taylor, who works for The Athletic over there in Kansas City. There was rumors about Andy Reid loud at the end of last week. Post us talking on Monday last week. End of last week, it was like, this could be Andy Reid's last game coaching in here. This just kind of comes with the whole progress or the whole thing about being an older gentleman who is already has a resume that is Hall of Fame worthy and has already had success, and this is just the new normal for the Chiefs? Or why do you think this became a topic of conversation? Because everybody sees how much fun, seemingly, Andy Reid is having coaching this particular Chiefs team. Yeah. Why would you ever want to leave that is another thought. Well, you wouldn't. But, again, I think it's fair to wonder. Right now, I think he's the most tenured, senior most coach in the NFL. So if you're in that position, inevitably, questions are just naturally going to arise. Again, there are people out there who have wondered about it. If the Chiefs were to win, could Andy Reid walk away? I mean, that, that's that been a question that's been out there. I think it's he, he's done it so long, got a big family. Uh, physically, it's a hard job. Do you keep doing it? I mean, to me, when you're coaching Patrick Mahomes, it, it couldn't be any better than that. But the fact of the matter is, for everybody, it comes. there comes a time and you just decide that that's enough and you want to go do other things in your life. And Tom Moore is still coaching. Tom Moore is 95 years old, still coaching. Yeah. Still it doesn't come up for everybody, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And Andy Reid, it's like he waited his entire career to potentially get something sure. like this. Yeah. Feels like a football guy. The way he spoke about the ball, he was like very classy too on the stage where he talked about Baltimore and Harbaugh and in Kansas City, we love you. It's like he feels he feels like a guy that I would have loved to play for every time I hear him speak. And People I think love him. Yeah. People love him. People love him. I mean, he's Reed. he's a beloved coach. And He's done it so long, and he's so respected, and he's held in such high regard. 
Uh, but again, there are people out there who have wondered, I mean, who knows if it's right? It's his decision. It's his life. He gets to do whatever he wants. They're not forcing him out. But the question's come up. The question has come up in the past. And the question will come up again in the future. And he, only he gets to answer that. We talk about the offense for Kansas City, obviously, but yesterday, different stars. Go ahead, D-Butt. Yeah, uh, held this Ravens team to 10 points, but they've been great all season long, and this is nothing new for Spags. A few Super Bowl titles under his belt as a D.C. Why have, hasn't there been any, I guess, uh, energy around him being a head coach in the league? I know he's been a great D.C. for a long time, but has he come out and say he doesn't want to be a head coach, wants to be the Chiefs long term? What is it about Spags and head coach that's not happening? You know you know what? I, I just think he's been around so long and, and he's so respected that people just kind of overlook it after a while. That I mean, he was, a, he was the head coach of the, the St. Louis. Was it the St. Louis Rams? I think it was the St. Louis Rams. Long time. Uh, that shows you how long that he's been doing it for. And I think it's like life. People just like the new hot flavor. Uh, and he's the old reliable BlackBerry phone that you can always count on. It may not be, it's trendy. Everybody's got the new iPhone. you know. And he's the BlackBerry. It's the old model, but it still works really well and still really dependable. But people don't think when they're going to get a new phone, I'm going to go get the BlackBerry model. I'm going to go get the new iPhone 14. That's how they think about it. And I think that it's like that with him. Like they're looking for the hot new coach and a lot of these guys that are out there they're in their mid-30s and steve's in his early 60s so they're just that's not the first place they're thinking when they're going to get a head coach man good for or not hey good for the chiefs yes you know we we talk about Mm -hmm. like up there in detroit we don't know who's going to be commander's head coach is ben johnson going to end up there or is aaron glenn we thought he was going to go to the titans like potentially both or anthony weaver or mike mcdonald Okay, so that's uh, on the other side of the whole thing. But it's like getting a chance to have both of your coordinators stay is like such a weapon these days, especially whenever you look at the stats of like since 2022, every single team has changed their offensive coordinator at least one. It's like it's been so Andy Reid and Spags potentially get a chance to run this back again. And then what again? Again. (laughs) And then what again? And then what again? It's like uh, that's a match made in heaven, especially if you're Chiefs fans. Speaking of Chiefs, though, go ahead, Ty. Yeah, Shefty, do we have any updates on Joe Tooney's health? Uh, I think all of us were kind of shocked when we heard that he wasn't going to be playing on Sunday. And obviously he tried to go with like the pec strain. Is there any thought that he might not be good to go for the Super Bowl? Or or what does that kind of look like moving forward? Well, it's not a strain. It's a torn pec that he's dealing with. And and. And the chances are, the overwhelming chances are, he's not going to play. We said last week on Wednesday that he was unlikely to play, not expected to play. Uh, Chiefs were poised to be without him, and they were without him. Um, And the chances are, the overwhelming chances are, they'll be without him for the Super Bowl. And Nick Allegretti stepped in there yesterday, did a great job. Guy's been in their system for five or so years, knows exactly what he's doing. Um, And look, you would have thought losing Tooney was a blow, but it's something that they were able to overcome and the overwhelming chances are they're going to have to overcome it again being that he's dealing with that torn peck that they're still trying to figure out whether or not he's going to have operated on after the year. Okay, so them just continuing to be able to move without lo- with losing an all-pro in the middle of there against that Ravens team yeah. mm. is just so stupid. You said he's been there for five, six years, though. I don't think any of us really knew that until you were saying it. It's like, of course, the Chiefs have a backup at the one position for five, six years. We're in the middle of the next dynasty right now. And I think we all have to remember that because I don't know what you picked or if you make picks or not. A lot of people are picking against that Chiefs team this past weekend. I mean, not only sports books, but everybody was like, this Ravens team, dominant, 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 dominant. What do you think the story is in Baltimore today? What do you think Harbaugh and them are talking about to maybe get over the hump and get this team? Because we've loved watching this Ravens team. We obviously think they're incredibly talented. They only lose by seven to the reigning champs and Lamar and everybody's talked about it. But what do you think they're do, uh, thinking about today? Is it free agency again? Is it, do they change some stuff up? They had to love what Munkin did. Like, how do you think Baltimore handles what happened to them yesterday? It's a really hard thing. I mean, you're going to have to have some long, hard conversations about that because <clears throat> This is a team that was coming off its best season that, as you mentioned, I think most people expected uh, to prevail and win and advance to the Super Bowl. The the odds makers in Las Vegas established them as a favorite over the Chiefs, and they came out and played a very atypical Baltimore game. The defense was not as sound as it was earlier in the season. The offense didn't move or run the football the way that it did earlier in the season. They just lost that mojo, and that's... 
that's what's incredible about the NFL is you can have this dominant season and just walk all over people and then it's over in one afternoon. And so um, they're going to be looking to make changes every year. As you mentioned, you were talking about your Colts team. You know it's not the same roster. They're going to make changes. They have a lot of players who are free, key free agents. Very few teams, if any, have done a better job of adding personnel and uncovering added players to make that roster better. And honestly, Pat, I think they just have to go back and run it back and try it again. Like, run it back again next year, have Lamar play like that again, and you hope that when you get to the postseason that it's different. I I don't know what Lamar has to do. The record in the postseason is subpar. He has not played the same way in big moments that he has in all other moments. I don't know why that is. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it certainly talks about everywhere. Yeah. And then people talk about talking about it Mm -hmm. a lot on the internet as well. That's a whole nother sub-conversation that takes place. But that team beat 11 winning teams this year, I think. By? By, I think, a margin of... Destroyed them. Yeah, like they... Destroyed them. They proved themselves literally all year that they could play against the best competition, which is why whenever you talk about playoffs, and they go, look at this guy's stats in the playoffs. It's like, well, you're playing. These are the best teams, regardless in the playoffs. So it's a little bit of... Best plans, too. Yeah, greatest coaches, best Mm -hmm. coaches, best teams. It's like, there's a reason it gets a little... The road gets a little tighter Mm -hmm. towards the end there. So whenever playoff stats are brought up, it's like, yeah, I understand. But man... This year felt like it was different for the Ravens. Yeah. And it just ended in the same exact way. Now, is that because the Chiefs, you know, do the Chiefs win them head game, mind games before they even get in there? Maybe. And it's like, you think to yourself, like, here we are. Or were they too confident? Like, did they think this Chiefs team is banged up and not ready to go? Like, I wonder what it is, what actually leads to it. And I assume they'll be thinking about that all offseason. I I think we start with the fact that 15 is cold blooded. Mm -hmm. That's it. Serial killer, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute serial killer, that guy. When when, when, when you got 15 out there, like, he came out, first drive, down the field. Look at this key. I mean, you know, it's just there's certain, like you say, you say, oh, boy, you know, we're we're in for it today. And you just know. And that guy, and by the way, like, look at Travis Kelsey's numbers in the postseason. They are off. The charts. And so greatest these guys. Yeah. The greatest ever. These, yeah, that's, that's what he is. Yeah, yeah. Ari, look, look at the numbers in his last 12 playoff games, okay? Is there a game in there with fewer than six catches, five catches? I mean, 108. fewest numbers, yeah. 71 yeah. yards. So fewest is five, 71, scores in almost every game, produces. It's like it's the playoffs, 15 and 87 are dialing it up. Mm-hmm. They're dialing it up hot, and they're going to beat you. They're going to beat you. That's just the way it's been most every time. It's the rarity when a team beats them. I don't care where they're playing. It's rare. And and the 49ers will have that chance to do that. Um, and so we'll see how that goes. But that that is a deadly duel. What was that? It's a text from... Uh, um, a text from somebody. <laughs> what's your deal? Come on. Just let it slip. <laughs> what, what, what do you want me to tell you? What's my deal? We need to send you some edibles, you know? Yeah. Get him in there so he just yeah. accidentally yeah. loosens him oh, up. It's oh, actually wow. a text from, boom, John Lynch just texted me. Good He's, text. Good text. Good text. Four. A compliment or news? Owner? Looking good. Already, good text. Already said. What does that mean? What the good hell? text. Like it was properly worded? Like gra- let, the let, grammar let, 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 was grammar. good? Right. Let's put it this way. We hang up here. We're going to be busy returning some calls and texts uh, in regards to some information that okay. may or may not have to do with some things going on in the league. In which parts of the league? I don't have to do this full guess who thing, but does it have a mustache? Does it wear glasses? <laughs> like, where where are we headed? What type? Is this coordinator <laughs> job? Head coaching job? Players stuff? I got, so, I, got so, I got somebody texting me, and they want to know what it's going to take to get you off this damn network and get you back to punting. I don't know. Like, you just tell me what it's going to take to get that done. The Chiefs? The number that's being reported, (laughs) the number that's being reported by uh, everybody as what the deal is, that ain't going to be enough. It's going to have to be more Mm -hmm. than that. But also... I'm going to need about two to three months to get these uh, urine and blood clear. Yeah, that's right. You know, I'm not passing I'm not passing any of these tests that they're going to put me in. But 
<laughs> if it's a if it's a Super Bowl team, you know what? We can lie for two weeks. Yeah, I can look at your. Uh, sometimes I see your eyes, Pat, and I can see that you wouldn't pass these tests. Well, I can see that they lighten the uh, THC test, from what I've been told, uh-huh. which is good news. It's the science I think that I'm experiencing right now that they're going to have the biggest issue with. Sure, uh, <laughs> but we can hide that for two weeks. Yeah, sure. There's some <laughs> Russian scientist that we can certainly figure out. Absolutely. Can't wait to see the news that you broke. Uh, Connor has a question for you here, and you probably won't yeah. say anything, actually. Yeah, yeah, you definitely won't. And we all know it's Ben Johnson, the commanders, is the news that you just got. That's clearly a done <laughs> deal. But um, looking at the, you know, both those teams as a whole, how many guys, you just mentioned, you know, McDonald and another one from the Ravens, how many guys are going to get poached from the Ravens staff and the Lions staff that maybe we don't even know about, too? Like, I know New England brought in the Lions pass game coordinator to interview for the offensive coordinator job. Like, are there going to be a lot of those as well, or are we possibly just going to see some of those big names leave and the rest of you know the kind of coaching staff stay together? Yeah. Well, well, first and foremost, I- I'm not convinced yet that Ben Johnson is getting the commander's job. I know oh. people have said that he's the presumptive favorite, and he may get the job. Like He, he very well may. He's in contention. But that is not a slam dunk at all right now. Mm-hmm. And 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 they are definitely looking at other people as well. And again, they may come back to Ben Johnson. But I think that they're pretty impressed with Mike McDonald and Aaron Glenn and Anthony Weaver as well. And I think those guys are going to have a legitimate chance to get that job. Um, and then Ben Johnson's also in play in Seattle. So you have to see, okay, well, if he doesn't get Washington, is he then in Seattle? Or does Seattle pull an upset? Again, people have... People have said here that they think Ben Johnson is going to Washington and Dan Quinn is going to Seattle. Yes. And I will bet you, I will bet you that at a minimum, one of those is not right. Hmm. At a minimum. Okay. Maybe, maybe Whoa. both. Whoa. 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 Let's go. Whoa. We'll see. All right. So, by the way. So where's Dan I, Quinn going? I, Back to Dallas? What about Vrabes? Where's Vrabes at in this entire thing? Bill Belichick? He's not doing anything? What, what, Pete? Like, I have so many what? more questions no, now. No, no, Ra- Vrabes was – Vrabes, I believe, I believe that Vrabes would have been the guy in L.A. if Harbaugh didn't get the uh, job there. If Harbaugh had gotten on the plane to go to Atlanta, I think Vrabel – would have been the next guy that the Chargers turned to oh, and would have got a job. Vrabes. Okay, so now Vrabes is heading back to Ohio State on a $13 million a year NIL deal to be a <laughs> consultant <laughs> That'd be there. smart. So Michigan can keep doing what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Bill Belichick, we're just assuming, is taking a year off. He's going to do TV, hopefully on this show once a week. Uh, I, I think that he's sitting back and waiting, and he's going to see how this all evolves still. And by the way, like, Again, there still are two openings, and neither one has contacted him yet. But what I would also say is, let's see how these couple of days go, and let's see if somehow, Whoa. somehow, in a long shot, unlikely way, he enters the picture in one of them. Like I don't think it's likely, but it's not, until the jobs are filled, he's still out there. Shefty, you gave us something on the way out. Mm-hmm. Boom. We yep. appreciate it. Seattle. We appre- on this championship overreaction Monday. You gave us something on the way out. We love you, Shefty. Have a good one. We'll stay tuned to your Twitter account to see what news is potentially about to break. Mm-hmm. You're the man, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing about to break. Nothing about to break. We're just, we're just, we, you know, we're just lining up the ducks. You don't know. Here. You don't know. Right. Well, we don't. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Shefty. Yeah, yeah, Shefty. Bill's not in yet. Whoa. Whoa. Look out. He said long shot, not likely, but who knows? They haven't hired anybody. Everybody says Ben Johnson's here. Dan Quinn's here. I bet one of those, if not both those, is wrong. It's like, oh, Shefty. Here we go. He knows. Shefty knows that that He's gunking right now. So who's going where? Is Vrabes potentially going to Seattle then? Is Bill? Because he's not going to the commies. They ruled him out. What about Slowick down there? We thought Houston was out. Maybe he's in the Washington job. Whoa! Insanity around the NFL as we have the Super Bowl set in the next hour. We'll have A.J. Hawk and... Dan Orlovsky. Wow. Yeah. And Kyle Juszczyk, third hour. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Take three. Hi, how's it going? My name is Pat Mack. I used to hold balls for Adam Vinatieri. Now I'm in his home state. College game day is absolutely electric in Brookings. <laughs> game day has made the voyage to Brookings, South Dakota to experience a game with the best fans in college football. Rain, 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 rain. 
I unfortunately cannot attend because I have a game this Sunday, so I sent a man I trust to make my picks. A man who is my holder for almost a decade. Please be nice to him. Welcome this week's celebrity guest picker, Pat McAfee. Go big, go blue, go Jacks. Who's the Auburn? Yes, everybody saw this. The best fake putt in the world. What do you think, Pat? I absolutely loved it all the way up until execution time. That is not one we like to show in the brand headquarters and punting and kicking world. Oh, dance off. Oh, let's get weird. Oh. Yes, oh. duck that, huh? Bang! Right on oh. the top of the dome. That makes it a lot easier when you've got a dummy standing right in front of you like that. Running, running. He's... Oh! Hi, Luke! Daniel Russo! <laughs> wax on! Wax off! Knee to the face! Yes! Yes! Go! Yes! Go! Yes! Go! yes! He's being stick. With that 15, they celebrate by doing shotguns. And I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> I'm going to the University of Virginia Catholic. That was great. Whoa! But I'm going Trey. Oh. Please excuse my dumb friend Kirk. <laughs> since 4 a.m. College game day comes to town, they lose their mind. The population of this state is about 800,000, and when the Jackrabbits take the field, they're alongside all 800,000 South Dakotans. The Dakota was in Fargo for far too long. Today, 5 o'clock local time, the Dakota marker is back in beautiful Brooklyn, South Dakota. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice, could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this championship overreaction Monday, January 29th, 2024. Hour two of the program starts now. Football! It is beautiful. First hour presented by Verizon. We appreciate the hell out of them. This second hour is about to be even more lit. Hell oh. yeah. Heck yeah. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Corner and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Damn. Cowboys Town Diggs is here. Nine-year NFL vet Darius J. Butler is here and joining us now live from an attic in Ohio is a man who's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup winner, a father of 10, a COVID survivor, and the current president of Ohio. Whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hawk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Hawker, obviously, championship Sunday lived up to the billing. Seven-point game in the first one. Three-point game, inevitably, in the second one with a massive second-quarter comeback for the number one seed, San Francisco 49ers. You could take it whichever direction you want. How did you see championship Sunday, and what are your thoughts about the Super Bowl that's set? Well, it's tough to figure out, like, pick out where you want to start. With Both those games were awesome, but the first thing that pops in my mind was just the I'm sorry, Foxy, but the Lions' disastrous third quarter. That yep. was just absolutely tragic. And yeah. I don't want to I don't want to just say, hey, Hold it's on tragic real quick. for the Lions. Eight quarters, okay? A lot of things happen. Mm -hmm. Deep ball off a guy's face. Boom, Ooh. catch. Brandon Ayuk, good for number two on SportsCenter Top Ten. Momentum is real. Momentum is real. I think that third quarter will show you that. 
Well, the momentum deniers are certainly going to have to battle through a lot of people looking at them and saying, what, did you watch? You see that? Did you? <laughs> how did, uh, what do you think? Damn. You don't think good vibes, confidence, energy, feeling as if everything's going to go right for an entire group of people and it obviously being on display for an entire quarter isn't real? What do you, what do you, what, what are you, we talking about what are we here? even talking those about? Those people didn't play sports. No chance that's, those people played sports. That's, I, I'm thinking they've never felt Agreed. what it's like to get into a groove Bingo. or into like a zone or like when you're well, They've never been on the other side of it though. They've never <laughs> been on the other side when another team all of a sudden yeah. has momentum and you're thinking, yeah. okay, we got to make a play to stop this somehow and it just continues to snowball and snowball and that's what we saw. Let alone just uh, organized sports and football and everything like pick up basketball. Yeah. There can be yep. some slob white that you choose to guard. <laughs> sure. And then somehow maybe four points in, five points in he gets the ball he throws it it goes in all of a sudden it's like okay he gets the ball again he goes in it's like what the hell is and the this? whole gym screaming right now they're going nuts for that guy yeah and they call it a heat check like this yep. is something mm -hmm. that actually exists in the world of sport that's just momentum mm -hmm. that, is, that is what that is basically what momentum is and the Detroit Lions lost it all oh. whenever they decided to live by the sword and then inevitably die by the sword on a fourth down failure, then a fumble, then a face mask catch, right. then a, I mean, just everything one after another, vibes turn completely. But even with all that happening in one quarter, 24 24 going into the fourth. Mm -hmm. Dream come true for the NFL, I assume. Everybody's talking about them wanting Taylor Swift. You know what they really wanted? Was the prime time game yeah. mm -hmm. on Championship Sunday going into the fourth quarter? Tied. That is exactly what they wanted, and they got it. 24-24 going in there. I think a lot of us thought the brand new Lions were built for this. This is what the brand new Lions have shown all year long. They've shown that they've been able to be resilient. They've shown that they've been able to make mistakes. They've shown that they've been able to bounce back time in time again not only because they non kneecaps and they're tough but in their soul they all have bought into the culture that mcdc has been pitching for at least the last two years what we all forgot though is the niners have been pitching the same exact culture you know like the same exact thing mm -hmm. for basically four or five years now mm -hmm. brock purdy only in his second year he picked up where jimmy garoppolo and the boys kind of left off and has kind of carried the tradition but fred warner george kittle what? Use check, what? What? all these guys the culture that is in san francisco and has been in san francisco is a tough resilient talented dog mentality group which i think is exactly what the detroit lions mm -hmm. have instilled in them i think we all just give kind of the grittiness to detroit because the city of detroit certainly much more gritty well it depends on how you describe the word grit i guess than san francisco but this niners team dogs across the board the entire locker room at every level and they showed that last night not only physically mentally being down 17 first time in conference championship history that a team has lost after having a 17 point lead and that guy right there put the team on his back what a beautiful thing from old brock purdy yeah did anyone expect brock to be using his legs like this and making these gigantic plays and that one you showed earlier at the, towards the end of the third when he spun out from an almost guarantee sack, oh, boom, throws the use check on the sidelines, the toe tap, just unbelievable play, things like that. Like, that stuff adds up, man. Like, in, when you're Detroit and you're the defense trying to get stops, things like this, like, look at the effort. Obviously, it's not a lack of effort by Detroit, mm -hmm. but you are dog-tired after that play, and look at this. They are just so juiced, and they just continue to roll into the Niners there. That man right there will be joining us in about an hour. Kyle Juszczyk, big brain, fullback, has been in the Pro Bowl like the last 15 years in the <laughs> NFC. Is But look at how nice the catch is, too. I mean, let's all hands. Mm -hmm. That's a fullback. Mm -hmm. That's a big meathead well, number. And he's turning and falling forward to ensure that he gets the first down, really, too. The shot from the pylon of his feet. Mm -hmm. It's oh, like nice. that that's a fullback's feet right there. Gorgeous. <laughs> that is uh <laughs> that's what a wide receiver said. That's a fullback's feet right there that he's keeping in there. And that entire team has had this mindset all year of like what happened last year at the NFC championship yep. can't happen again. And we kind of heard that a little bit afterwards felt like from the players as it, not that they've been disrespected but they certainly stuck up for Brock Purdy but it's like this team has been this for a long time now and we've all been captivated with the Chiefs story I feel like the Niners think to themselves we've been okay over the last five years as well multiple NFC championships just never been able to get over the hump can this group do that you think oh uh, yeah I think so we talked about it earlier uh, when MCDC was talking about how how hard it is to get back and you think about how many NFC championship 
how many championships games this team, this core unit has been to, different quarterbacks, different things happening, the injuries, Garoppolo, the missed throws, and now for them to get back to this point and have a chance to kind of, you know, everyone flash back to the kid on the sideline saying he'll be back. So now a lot of them are back. Brock Purdy, obviously, new guy in the center. Having C-Mac back there, having the type of year he's had. I know he got banged up in this game, but I think he'll be healthy for the Super Bowl. Two weeks, Chris I mean, McCaffrey. Yeah, he'll, yeah, yeah, he'll, his yeah. he'll be 100% in Vegas. But uh, I can't wait to see I can't wait to see this game. I, I can't uh, either. That's why whenever people it. are, like, mad about the game, I put out a poll. I was like, all right, Super Bowl's been set. Who's going to win this thing? And I, I think it was up over 100,000 votes or whatever. I, I don't remember the exact number, but a lot of – oh, it was. Okay, sweet. 165,000 votes. Thank you to all that participated. The Chiefs get the nod, and it was 58-42, and then it ends up at 56-44. Because remember, we were wondering for a long time yep. – if the Twitter poll was real or not. Mm -hmm. Because we realized quickly that once a percentage is seemingly set for both sides, it just stays that way. So is the first group, focus group of the poll doers, exactly the same as everybody mm -hmm. going forward? That's kind of what Twitter has shown us. This moved from 58 to 56, so Niners fans came late. But a lot of the quote tweets said, who cares? <laughs> yeah. I'm not watching this oh, game. Sure. <laughs> I hate this game. It's like, what are we talking about? These are electrifying football teams on both sides of the field for both teams now. What's the matchup, I guess, based on your timeline that people want? I don't know. That's what I was wondering. So Detroit gets in, everybody's happy. It's like, I would be too because it would be a good story. But mm -hmm. whenever Super Bowl comes around, are there still people like, happy Detroit's here? I, I, don't, I don't know yeah. if that's still happening. I think it's obviously – has to do with the Swift. And mm -hmm. then you think about the two – Swift, Travis, Brock Purdy. Mm -hmm. Those two have basically been the – They elevated villains. the Niners. They, if people are pissed and they're saying, oh, we're keep showing Taylor Swift, all that stuff, what, like, all right, just – we've heard it enough, whatever. Just continue about your life, hopefully. But you gave this team juice. Like I, we said before, the Chiefs are, like, embracing the villains. We see Kelsey throwing the, you know, Tucker stuff pregame, all of that. And you see, like, the energy they bring to the game on the road. Like, hey, it's us against the world, and that's how they're playing. So if you're pissed about that and that the fact that they're so good and I want to see somebody else do it, like, I think you're fueling them and giving them even more mm -hmm. chips on their shoulders. I, they love going into Buffalo. I'm sure they love going into Baltimore. And obviously, yep. Travis got to cut a promo afterwards. And he said, Chiefs is still the Chiefs. Is what he, literally the first <laughs> thing he said. Chiefs is still the Chiefs. And then the fight for your right to party. The video of him and Justin Tucker and Patrick Mahomes, though, I would like to chat about a little bit. Because yes. everybody's automatically calling uh, Patrick and Travis assholes. And obviously, there's a clip and a video. Well, this is Travis's part. The first one was Patrick Mahomes. If we could run the first one, uh, Patrick Mahomes throwing and then kicking the holder there, okay? While Justin Tucker's in the middle of stretching before he does his warm-ups. And then you see Patrick and Tucker talking right there. So this is pre-pre-warm-up, okay? This is before the field is open for warm-up. So it's an open field pretty much. Allowed to warm up wherever you want. Kickers, punters love this time because we can go feel the wind. We don't have to really worry about where the ball is landing to because sometimes there's players on the field, DBs on the field, wide receivers on the field, offensive linemen don't want to hit them. Almost killed Tim Tebow one time when oh. we were playing the Jets because when you're punting a ball, it's going all over the place. This particular situation, personally for me, now, Justin Tucker is a Hall of Famer. Justin Tucker is a dog. I love Justin Tucker. I'm a big fan of his. This feels like an easy, where do you need me to go, uh, move out of the way, two yards type thing on Justin Tucker's side, personally. Uh, I've had a situation like this pop off with Vinatieri before, where Vinatieri was maybe warming up somewhere, and the other team's quarterback was trying to get some throws in, or a wide receiver was running some routes right by us, and it's just like, a, hey, where do you need us to go? And Vinatieri would just like move like two yards, yeah. let me get out of your way. So I like that Justin Tucker was like, nah, I'm not moving, even if you are Patrick Mahomes. And I'm sure they've been at the Pro Bowl together and many events together, and they talk like that. But like what Travis Kelsey did, I think anybody would do if their quarterback was potentially going to step on a helmet. Yeah, before his ankle. I mean, that's, look how dangerous that yeah, is. Yeah. Footballs around your feet. Come on now. Exactly. And Patrick has a warm-up, I assume, that he does in this thing. Mm -hmm. Justin Tucker has a warm-up that yeah. he has in this thing. But this is normally handled in a very – and the kicker normally moves with just like the – Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> like, Any different if it's your stadium? No, because it's just like that is open field there mm -hmm. at that particular time. Just you're allowed to be wherever. Now, I think Tucker probably has a set routine that he does. Probably kicks from there, one steps from there, and then he backs up <laughs> five maybe. And Patrick Mahomes is like, I do it in five minutes. I do not. This is – I have a routine yeah, right. as well. And in this entire pecking order, like normally – and once again, Tucker – is Justin Tucker. Yeah. So he can so right do. here, though, he sets up a ball right at the goal line. Is that like a warm-up where you start to 
to kick little balls right from the goal line. Yeah, I assume he's doing like no steps there. He's also stretching yeah. for most of this. He's not even kicking balls. So Tucker is certainly, in my eyes, watching this. <laughs> Kind of being the it's, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's, pest a little bit, like, like yeah. a little bit of the pestiness, which once again, I love. Hey, and it's Justin Tucker, first ballot Hall of Famer, so Playoff. he can do whatever the hell Tucker wants <laughs> to do. But in most situations, you would certainly just be like, okay, for Patrick Mahomes, you know, like that's Patrick, that's, yeah. that guy's making a lot of money for all of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, not that you're not, Tucker, and not that Lamar isn't, but once again, this is... You know, like you wouldn't do that, with Tom Brady. I don't, yeah, don't want to piss him off. Yeah, you know, I don't think you would, like Peyton Manning. I don't think that situation is probably happening there. But maybe with Justin Tucker, I, dude's a dog. I have no idea. So I, I saw a lot of people immediately attacking Trevor. Look at him attacking a kicker. You know, you got to stick up. He's going after the weakest guy. Watch your mouth. Okay, now you're <laughs> now easy. you are now you're being more disrespectful than Travis Kelsey is almost. But I think any teammate of Patrick Mahomes or Tom or Peyton, right. or any of these top quarterbacks would be like, uh, we're not risking a rolled ankle because mm -hmm. you want to do a stretching routine right now while we're trying to do our thing. So I appreciate it that the pettiness took place. I appreciate that Tucker's like, what? Yeah. Wow, I'm not moving. Yeah, I'm not moving. And I'm not even going to be here. I'm going to go stretch over here. <laughs> Leave my balls. Yeah, don't touch my balls with my helmet. <laughs> like, I respect that. But the reaction, I think, was just very natural. Like, I, I think that was the expected reaction from Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I don't know, like, people who just weren't fans of either team, how they thought I saw a lot of people saying, you know, Kelsey and Mahomes are being assholes to Justin Tucker. This is, like, what makes playoff football mm -hmm. playoff football. Yes. Like, this is what you want. I wish this happened in the Lions. Niners game. And guess what? I wish there was a brawl after it, too. Bingo. People got in a fight. Like, there almost was during the kneel. Yeah. yeah. During the kneel with one second left. Yeah, Because well, that ball snapped, one second's being run off, regardless, because the ball snapped. It's just like a kickoff. If somebody just catches it and kneels it, they have to run at least one second off. So Purdy taking that snap. Man. <laughs> like yep. standing Find some time. That yep. stuff. And then going out, it's like, mm, you are. Defenses get so pissed. That <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially get very mad. Yeah. yeah, especially in that moment. Season just ended. You know, yeah. season just Three ended. Three-point game. Terrible way. Everyone's yeah. pissed. Hey, yeah. Purdy's just making sure he saw the Lions against Smart. the Bucks, snap the ball, and have that clock met. And Purdy say, hey, I'm just going to make sure. Take this A. Take this knee, enjoy this moment. Well, that's awesome too, though, because it's like, hey, if if that is something that sticks with the Lions, boom, we have like a new little oh, pissed rivalry. off rivalry. Yeah, like yeah. that is the stuff I love. But again, it, it's watching Purdy do that. It was, oh, Purdy, you son of a bitch. They're not going to like this one bit. You stepping back and taking your time. But the Niners don't care. Niners no. are about it. No, you know, the Niners are about it. Like that is just like we we said. Th these two teams are kind of mirror images of each other. Yeah. What MCDC was trying to build was what John Lynch and Shanahan had built over there. Now, they have a lot bigger names and been around longer, and people know them and everything like that, but they want it hard-nosed, tough, yep. fly around, talk a little shit. You know, the CJ, GJ stuff before the game with Debo Samuel, like, both these teams are okay with that type of style of football and that being what they're known for. And to the victor go the spoils, and then to the losers... Obviously, you got to deal with it. Here's Dan Campbell after the game. AJ, excited to get your take on this. Sometimes you can only say so much. You got to live it. Unfortunately, you got to get your heart ripped out, which we did, and it's a lesson learned. And look, I told those guys, this may have been our only shot. Do I think that? No. Do I believe that? No. However, I I know how hard it is to get here. I, I'm well aware, and it'll be, it's going to be twice as hard to get back to this point next year than it was this year. That's, that's the reality. And if we don't have the same hunger and the same work, which is a whole other thing, once we get the offseason, um, then we got no shot of getting back here. I don't care how much better we get or what we add or what we drive. It's irrelevant. Um, it's going to be tough. Everybody in our division is going to be loaded back up. And, uh, you know, you're not hiding from anybody anymore. Everybody's going to want a piece of you, and uh, which is fine, you know. It's fine. Which is fine. Mm -hmm. But... Um, so it's hard. You want to make the most of every opportunity. And we, we had an opportunity, and we just couldn't close it out. It's, uh, it does. It stings. He let stings. it He let it off with saying, sometimes you got to get your heart ripped out. You see, you can talk about it, but until you experience it, 
you're not really going to fully comprehend that. I don't think that's just football, by the way. That's life, mm -hmm. right? You think back to a potential relationship where you didn't fully understand, then your heart gets broken. It's like, oh, I didn't know this exists. I didn't know this was even possible. Maybe a job that you were supposed to have, boom, you get absolutely screwed out of that situation. It's like, I didn't know this was even possible, even though people potentially tell you that it's the case. You don't really know until you have to experience it and go through it. That's actually maturity and growth, I think, for humans. For this team, I think they're going to view it the same exact way. I'm still all in on the brand new lines going forward, and I think this is only going to propel them and help them. AJ, how'd you take that messaging there? I mean, I thought he was spot on. Absolutely, like he said, there's he's letting us know there's no guarantee we're ever going to be back in this game, but he expects to be back. Yes, of course, but he played it. He's coached for a while now. He understands what has to happen to get there, and all the things that have to go right. And it's true, though. It, yeah, like you'll say, oh, they got a target on their back now. Whatever people expect them, but it's true. Like managing expectations. Now the Lions. There's a new standard for the Lions. They're in an NFC Championship game. Mm -hmm. They could have won that thing. They're up big at halftime. Mm -hmm. So how do you kind of run with that now where you can't always be like, hey, and no one's giving us a shot. We're the underdogs. Now you got to handle success, and that's one of the toughest things to do. So the Niners standard is they should have been the number one seed in the NFC. Yeah. That's how we all viewed the Niners coming in. Yeah. Eagles, right? right should have yeah, been right, right there. there. But then whenever we see you know, the, all the close games everybody mm -hmm. was talking about earlier, and then they start sliding, all of a sudden the expectations are like, the Niners are the team mm -hmm. that needs to go and do this. Dallas Cowboys had a conversation for a little bit, yeah. but then we're all reminded the Niners yep. are the team that yeah. are going to be around. That's going to happen for the Lions now. One year yep. of oh. having a phenomenal run. Yep. And now fans, media, other people are like, well, let's see if the big dumb dipshit in Detroit can yeah. do it again. Yeah. That, that's what everybody's going to do. 1,000% have. standard is higher. I was the one that had a pretty low standard. I was the one that just wanted mm -hmm. a playoff win. But now that we go through this, we go on this run, we're in the NFC Championship, this team could have won the Super Bowl this year. Oh. Oh, One yeah. million percent this team could have yeah. won the Super Bowl. Uh, so yeah. oh, I, no. that's that's where we're at now. It's and just... it's going to be way different, though. Like, we were pretty much injury-free all season. That's huge. That's a lot of luck. And then also, I mean, Shefty just told us Ben Johnson might not be leaving, but we all assume Ben Johnson gone, Aaron Glenn gone. Everything changes in the offseason. So no matter what, regardless, I do think the standard's higher, and I think MCDC would agree with that. 35,000 people are in Ford Field watching an away game. That's huge. Sweet. The culture's there. The standards are high. Mm -hmm. How would Detroit respond? And for the Niners, can you win one? Yeah. yeah. Gotta go get it done. You know? Can you win <laughs> one? They lose They've another. So close. Could you imagine they lose another one? No. Oh my! No, the way people will talk about that team. Now that team is another team that people do shit on. Seemingly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and I don't know why. I, I feel like we get along with everybody. Just because the they team. have a bunch of big name players. I feel like when you have players that even like casual fans know, and you have multiple stars like that, and you don't have a ring yet. I think that's why people are going. Oh, well, you should have three rings by now. Oh, so what you just brought up there is probably the right play. And Purdy. Oh, we're doing a lot of talking about a team that's never won. Is they that, that kind of how? Yeah. yeah. Ah, that's how it is with the Bills, that. and then with the Chiefs. Oh, they've won so much. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously people are never happy. But is that why I guess the Niners? Mm -hmm. That makes I, a lot more sense now that you mentioned. I it. think that's part of it, and then I think also with Shanahan after the twenty-eight-three and everything, and then now it's starting. I mean, granted, the last two weeks, you know, his record has changed in those games where they're down in the second half and they have to come back and win. But I think we start getting the like if if they were to lose to the chiefs then it's it's kind of the same andy reed narrative where it's like hey this guy's an unbelievable coach he'll get him to the big game but yeah, yeah he's an underachiever they have these unbelievable seasons he's a offensive guru he's a genius but then they just choke they in, the, in big the big one. game yeah exactly so until he actually gets over the hump and wins one i think it's kind of like the same thing and you would think to yourself this chiefs team seems gettable yeah <laughs> wow and then you remind yourself that ketchup loving son of a bitch is still under center. Yeah. Uh -huh. Andy Reid, uh, I assume he enjoys ketchup as well. Probably. Yeah, he's calling sure. plays. Travis Kelsey exists at a bigger level than ever before. Mm -hmm. Feels like he's more, right? Well, oh, yeah. Daniel, he's, because the amount of, think about the amount of. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's gained a bunch of, a bunch of uh, extra energy and fuel, I think, oh, from yeah. everything going on outside and off the field as well. And then D Bud asked uh, Sheffer this Spag's not up for any conversation for head coach anywhere. Yeah. You know, so he has a full on. Uh -huh. It's like all of a sudden the dynasty has the opportunity to keep stacking. Yeah, the Ravens at 10 points in the playoffs. I mean, that's pretty damn good. That's And on the flip side, the Buffalo, Ravens hold them to 17. Before. It's awesome, too. How about week before? Buffalo. Yeah. They I mean, don't get the respect they deserve just because Mahomes is so good, but Kelsey is so good. So, yeah, they're, they're going to always want to go out there and prove who they are as a defense. To that point, 
Chris Jones, right? Mm-hmm. Going into the year contract mm-hmm. situation, he's earned another million back yep. from what he lost. Way yep. to go. Mm-hmm. Had a baby, Chris. Good Kelsey. negotiation from the boys. I forget the names. Cats. Cats Brothers, thank you. Mm-hmm. Good good work by the Cats Brothers making that thing kind of end. Let's get back on the football field, end up in the Super Bowl again. But we talked about how Chris Jones never gets talked about because it's hard to be the fourth person in line yeah. whenever media is happening. Even with prime time, it's like, well, the story is Patrick Mahomes. Okay, this guy's got his own Mount Rushmore already. All right, what's the second story? Andy <laughs> Reid. Okay, Andy Reid, Hall of Fame, maybe the greatest coach of all time. Okay, what's the third story? Well, the greatest tight end of all time who's also dating Taylor Swift is there. Okay, what's the fourth story? Well, we, there's a defensive MVP playing on defense side of the ball. Okay, so we'll do top three. Yeah, you can go ahead and throw that one out. Last night, did you see on the stage? Oh, yeah. Everybody on the stage spoke. Except for Chris Jones, who was standing up. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, Chris Jones is standing up. Like, literally, because I think Patrick called Chris Jones over to stand right next to Travis, as Travis was getting talked to. Like, hey, he'll see you here, then he'll do the conversation. Instead, it was immediately, all right, back to you guys! Yeah, yeah. With Chris Jones standing there. It kind of feeds into the point of, like, the defensive side of things in Kansas City has been overlooked for years now, and they're dogs. And they won that game yesterday. Joining us now is a man who is obviously all-knowing when it comes to football. Yes. Hell yeah. He watches more film than any human on earth mm-hmm. because he's expected to talk about it for 10 to 15 hours every single day, all year long, on ESPN. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Orlovsky. Yeah, Dan, oh. Dan, before we dive into the games and the Super Bowl being set, earlier today, you said something we had never heard you say before. You're the worst, dude. Okay. You stepped know. on yourself. Okay. Let's run it again. I don't know, okay? <laughs> oh! oh! Breaking! Breaking! Oh! Fake! Breaking! Dan! 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 We're proud of you, Dan! That boy, Dan O. Proud of you, Dan. That was crazy. When it came out of your mouth, were you just like, whoa, 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 what did I say? Right there. Was that weird? I'm immediately I'm immediately regretting coming on to this freaking show today, dude. Well, I don't know. You heard me say it. I'm quoting Dan Orlovsky. Uh, if that's the right way to view this entire thing, we're proud of you. This is growth. Yeah. This is Championship Monday, too. Big numbers, big ratings, especially on first take. Oh, yeah. And Dan Orlovsky is allowing himself to be heard saying, I don't know. Whoa. Whoa. I don't even know what I was saying. I don't know, too. Uh, I was about it, whether or not they kicked the field goal, Detroit Lions. Uh, I was listening. The only thing I heard, though, is did Dan just say he didn't know an answer? Wait, no way. Oh, my God. That wasn't him. What happened? We're mind blown. We lo- Is this new Dano? Is this the new Dano? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Still, still same old Dan. Okay. You're still same old know-it-all. Still the same old Kia. <laughs> Okay, she just let slip. Damn. Golly. Yeah. Bummer. We take back the claps, don't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. Take back yep. the cheers. Yep, get them back. Mm-hmm. All the good jobs. <laughs> All right. Damn. I thought we had it. I know. Damn Orlovsky. You know what I mean? Damn Orl- Anyways, Dano, you were talking about the Detroit Lions and choosing to kick a field goal or not. Is this MCDC's fault? We talked about this in the first hour, but would love to get your take on it. Uh, so... MCDC live by the sword, die by the sword. This is how he's been literally all year long. I think he remained true to himself and his coaching style, to his locker room, and to the fans. I don't think a lot of Detroit Lions fans are necessarily ready to kill Dan Campbell for this, but the national media certainly is. And game management is a massive piece of a head coach's role. When you're down three super late or in the fourth quarter, like, I think in field goal range, you tie the game. When you're down 10, as soon as you get into field goal range, if you're gonna, I think you kick that to make it a one-score game if you're going to have to hit an onside kick anyway. So I certainly don't agree with all of his decisions there. But Dan remained true to himself. Is that how you saw it? And what do you think the conversation is going to be about Dan Campbell this particular offseason with how it ended with San Fran? Yeah, I think the context of who you are and who you're playing against and how the game is going matters in that as well. I don't think it's just an analytics-driven decision. Yes, Dan has done that all year in part because, one, their offense has been the best unit on the field more often than not between both teams. And then, two, their defense did not play at an incredibly high level this season for the majority of it. So I think just the awareness of, hey, the best thing that we can do is keep our offense out on the field. I've had a lot of people reach out to me and say, like, what about the one before halftime when he decides to kick it instead of going for it? I think, one, 
the momentum of, or, or at least not giving San Francisco the momentum of, hey, we made a fourth down stop before halftime and we get the ball and we can flip this game quickly. Momentum so real. kicking, yeah, momentum's very real. Kicking before halftime, he also answered it and said, like, we were fringe. We, we were just far enough away to not go for it, and that's why I kicked it. And then the four, in the, the two, obviously, in the, the second half, Reynolds drops it, okay? So, like, if they catch that ball, everyone knows different conversation. I think the play before matters a ton because Fred Warner made a great play. I mean, this is just a drop. And if he makes this, does the game different? Is there a different outcome? Probably, but, you know, that that's part of football. And then I think the fourth and three when they go for it and he's got to scramble and, you know, throw it to Amon St. Brown, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. Like, I think the reality is Dan was trying on that fourth and two. He's trying to end the game there. He knows if we go score on that drive, there'll be two or three minutes left in the third quarter. We're up 21 points. Like, I, I think the game is over. And then the fourth and three, I think philosophically, again, understanding who we are, who we're playing against. If they go for it, they're up. They're they're down three, right? If they go for it and don't get it, and San Francisco gets the ball back, goes down. At minimum, you hold them to a field goal. You still have the chance to go win the game with the touchdown drive. And he believes again in that offense. Obviously, San Francisco goes and scores, and it's a different conversation down ten. Um, but I I just don't think he did the wrong thing. They just didn't execute. So at the very end, let's talk about this before AJ's question for you. At the very end, down ten. If you're going to have to hit an onside kick, and I know they were doing math about, hey, defense could get a stop. It's like, we're in yeah. onside kick time right now. This is certainly onside kick time. I'm a firm believer in once you get into field goal range, if you're down 10, you take that field goal. Like, even if it's first down, like right now, minute 42, let's take this field goal. If we're going to have to end up probably getting a successful onside kick anyways, Let's yeah. get this thing to one score. Then we have more time because Jared Goff can throw a ball further if he gets stuck as opposed to a field goal, especially Badgley. No offense, Badgley. But like, I see, that's my question. Go ahead, pal. Like, I was going to ask you, Pat, is the kick, like, if he had Justin Tucker, I'd probably sit here and have a, like, a different, all right, we're going to go knock a 40 yard field goal in right now. And then we've got three timeouts with a buck 40 left. I don't know how much confidence they have. In their kicker, I, I I don't you would know better than I about. He's a good ball. You know, He's a good, kind of, hey, good ball striker. We've never seen him in this right. particular situation though. You know, so who knows? Yeah. how it'll so go. So I think again, you still believe our unit offensively is the best unit, and that's the unit that honestly, I'll be dead honest with you. I thought they were going to go for two after they scored here. I, I was like, I, I would not be surprised <laughs> if he goes for two just to you know go score and, and the field goal wins it. So I, I agree with your like philosophy on it. I just think you got to have a sure, sure thing at kicker to do that rather than, I don't know. I think Badgley's 40 to 40, 80 is like a 75% kicker. So I think I saw that stat. I, yeah, but so he, I think that, that, that's also well. counting like when he bounced around like three, four different teams. I think he's kicking better now than he has, but great onside kick. I thought Badgley willing to break his toes for that onside kick. High oh. bounce. You don't see enough people do it, to be honest with you, and yeah. that's an illegal touching, and mm -hmm. old buddy would have got the ball anyways if he doesn't touch it sure. right there because you're not allowed to touch him either if he's going to the football. So he's about a half a yard off from having a perfect ball, at least a collision probably taking place. So I appreciate the fact yeah. that he works on those because a lot of these kickers, it seems like watching from outside in as a human who's had pretty successful onside kick career, they don't even work it anymore because the odds are so low. But then in the <laughs> NFC Championship, need it. hey, we need one. Badgley hits a good ball. So I'm proud of him. But you just heard what Dan Orlovsky said about keeping the best team on the field. His locker room knows that Dan Campbell was like, hey, Goff, hey, Ragnall. Hey, boys, this is on you. This ain't on Badgley. Mm -hmm. This is on you. And he's done that all year long. I think it only yeah. reignites the flame for next year. Go ahead, AJ. Dan, let's go to the AFC. What was this Chiefs defense able to do? What did they do consistently yeah. throughout the night to hold this Ravens offense to 10 points? Yeah, Spagnuolo, uh, he's, he called the game like an offensive coordinator, AJ. And, and what I mean by that, and I know the conversation around Patrick today is, has been great. And, like, Patrick was really, really awesome. But the, the real story of the game is Steve Spagnuolo and the defense. And what I mean by called the game as an offensive coordinator, they, they played six different personnel groupings. Okay, so they played in their base defense, which is, you guys know, four down and three linebackers, four defensive backs, okay? Then they got into multiple different times when they got into three defensive linemen, three linebackers, and five defensive backs. Then they had multiple clips where they were in four defensive linemen, 
two linebackers, and five defensive backs. Then they had four defensive linemen, one linebacker, six defensive backs. And it was really interesting how in situational football, like they they would play those different personnel groupings. Second down, they were in multiple situations where they had four D linemen, one backer, or three D linemen, two backers. And so I just thought like the way that he, you know, so often in offensive football, we're changing our personnel to try to dictate to the defense, right? You guys have to match us with what we're doing, and then we get in favorable advantages. Spags did that on a consistent basis. Like he he was kind of controlling the personnel groupings. And I do think that through Monken, the offensive coordinator for Baltimore off and certainly for Lamar so I think like personnel wise they did that the second thing is it was really interesting when you'll watch some clips we're going to do them on NFL Live today they would take like sometimes when they played with one backer Bolton they would take Bolton and put him out on the perimeter and put Reed at the middle linebacker spot so Reed's I think speed with marrying either or, or, or mirroring, excuse me, Lamar potentially. Um, again, like threw them off. That's why I was a little bit surprised that Baltimore didn't run the football. Like his speed mattered. And then there are so many clips, and, and you guys defensively, D Butt and AJ could talk to it better, where like they're underneath coverage. Again, we're going to do it on live. You, you like the underneath coverage ball gets snapped and they take like a step forward. And then they don't even look at Lamar. They turn and run backwards with their back facing Lamar Jackson and like searching up routes and covering guys. Now, Lamar didn't play good. I don't want to minimize that. But just I thought that the different personnels they used and the way that they used it to take away some of the throwing lanes was spectacular. Look, there's a clip of it there. You know, this leads to the sack fumble. But those guys did such a great job of turning and searching guys up um, and kind of confusing a little little bit of the, the past concepts for Baltimore. 90 ended up getting a knee on a non-contact mm -hmm. yeah. seemingly later in the game, and he was not thrilled. Hopefully, we should ask Schefter about his health. We'll have time. we got two weeks until the Super yeah. Bowl. But Spags' defense has kind of been a star for the last two weeks. Patrick Mahomes even talked about how in the middle of the season he had to learn mm. and evolve. I mean, that's a stick. I mean, Absolute yeah. stick at the line of scrimmage to a Baltimore Ravens team in Baltimore. Yeah. Like, they came in and out physical the Baltimore yeah. Ravens, which I don't think any of us expected, but Patrick Mahomes chatted about how he had to realize when the defense was flying and when they were humming and being like, all right, I can, I can be safe here, no turnovers, don't have to make the explosive play every single time. We can even punt and just ride the defense. They're a more complete team now than they've ever been during this dynasty run, it feels like, Dan. Yeah, and that's kind of like in the conversation this year, Obviously, there were questions about the offense. What a play. And the, unbelievable. It, unbelievable That's football gods team. there, too, by the way. That's football gods as well, I think, which is yeah. tough to beat Sneed is, anybody. Yeah. He's spectacular, man. He's just a great football player. He's the best man cover guy in uh, football, in my opinion, just as looking at it from an uh, offensive perspective, Agreed. just lockdown man coverage and physical. But I, that, that was like you, the conversation this year with the Cheats was the offense and the offense and the offense, but they were always going to be in it because the defense. And I do think the defense has played their best ball this last couple of weeks. Um, and I think, you know, when you, you look at the defense and the way that they've drafted, I also think of like an underrated thing in that game is they tackled so well. Dude, there's there's two or three clips with McDuffie and Reed mm -hmm. out on the perimeter, one-on-one, -on -one, and they just lock dudes up and tackle. So it, remarkable play calling and plan and also just like execution. And it showed. It, it was, and I think just the, the last part of that, Pat, with when it regards to Patrick is like that's the difference in evolution you know like he went he's gone from this unbelievable jaw-dropping like ridiculous playmaking guy and he's still that plus like the game management plus that's what you know like that's kind of what makes him deadly go ahead d-butt yeah just a little bit more on that uh the ravens offense it seemed like i know the first snap of the game under center tried to get a run game and immediately it was just stopped and it, Spags did a great job on the edges. But do you think Mocking got away from that under center or even quarterback run game too early? Oh, absolutely. Debug go to the fourth down on their first series. Fourth down in the first series, they go unbalanced formation, quarterback run. Lamar guts yeah, it for like 21. 20. Yep. The very next play, they get an under center, heavy 21. So Ricard's on the field. They run power, pull the backside guard. Gus Everett goes for like 15. That was the last time they did it. Um, it, it was it was shocking to see, and it was they had one run on second down. I, I'm sure Hembo sent you guys this, but I was talking to this on second and third down yesterday. 
they threw the ball 25 times and ran the ball four times. Like, that's just ridiculous. And so, yeah, I don't know why. He, and the weird thing is, and you defensive guys know this, with the personnel that he was playing, it even invites running the football more. You know, like, you, when you're going to play with 3D linemen and, and six bu- DBs on the field. Read spy. Sh- mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Should th- we should run the ball right down your throat. Yeah, that's the, the body size. That's mm-hmm. like the advantage that they have there. So Spags forced Baltimore to throw, and he forced Buffalo to run. You remember? Spags yeah. is kind of huh? – bag. I mean, to your, point, da- to your yeah. point, Dano, he has, you know, really mentally seemingly yeah. figured out the last two games. Does he have enough against his Niners team, this Spags defense? Do you think they match up well against this Niners offense with the power and star power that seems to be everywhere? Yeah, I do. I, I think he does such a good job in those games, too, of like dialing up run pressures to slow down the run game a little bit. Detroit did a really good job of it yesterday outside of like two or three plays. So I think that he'll commit some fronts. I, I just think the Chiefs can play such good man coverage as well. I thought Baltimore would win the game just because their defense was going to be so remarkable, and I thought they would run the football more. They obviously didn't, but the Chiefs could play such good, tight, legit man coverage. Um, you know, I, I I think that that's a good matchup for Kansas City defensively. Yeah, we'll, we got two weeks to break down. I can't wait cool. to hear all the thoughts, and I assume everybody that covers, you know, this sport every single day will have multiple different you know, oh, yeah, as definitely. we ride this wave of who we like, yep. Yep. who we don't like. And what at the end of the day, what you got to remember, Patrick Mahomes <laughs> is Patrick Mahomes. Picked against him twice, man. I'm not doing it anymore. I picked against him this past week, the first time I've ever done it. Literally. I, I did lost. it last, the Super Bowl last year and then this weekend. Well, I had him in a part of a parlay where 250,000 people were right alongside him because of how much I believe in Patrick Mahomes. But I bet against him this past weekend because of how much I thought the Ravens were different. I'm completely wrong, obviously. And Travis Kelsey heard me as well and said, hey, I heard you. You, uh, you didn't believe. <laughs> now, they're not the only team that people didn't believe in. On the other side, there's a guy pulling the trigger. Nobody seems to believe in, including... Go ahead, Ty. Yeah, Dan, I don't know if you've done it already, and if you haven't, uh, this would be a great opportunity if you'd like Perfect. to... Yeah, if you'd like to walk back your comments about Brock Purdy basically saying, like, hey, listen, anyone, including Mac Jones and those type of guys, <laughs> could do what he's doing right now in Shanahan's system... So do you want to walk back those comments? And that's also, what you said on this show. You, you remember. You said that's that. a lie. You said I that. never said that anyone <laughs> you could do that. that. Comfy, said, please. You said that we got the best. Show. We got the best content on. splunker on Bring us. It. You Bring did, it. Dan. Bring it. His, you did, his terminology Dan. was play like Brock that, Burrow. Like yeah. that. Yeah, like that. Justin like Fields, MVP like. I didn't say anyone. I didn't say anyone. Don't put words in my mouth. You said Mac Jones, so we'll put everybody up. Bob Mac Jones yeah, in the same yeah, conversation. Here well. oh, that's assumptions. You know what happens when we assume that? Well, you were assuming that Mac well, could do what Brock's doing. Exactly. Yeah. What happened? So there's a lot of assuming going on all of a sudden. Oh, oh. So do you want to walk that back, Dan? <laughs> and also, like, are we done with the Brock Purdy? Like, hey, this guy sucks. He's a game manager. He's just he's just okay. And because Shanahan is such a good play caller, that's why he succeeds. Are we finally at the point where we can be like, hey, this guy's actually pretty damn good at playing quarterback. Second year, Dan. I don't know if you're NFL Live crew. I don't know if you guys just all got in a meeting one day. You're like, yeah, this guy does stink. Hey, hey. Huh? I don't know, because it's coming a lot of coming out of your your crew, who we got a lot of respect for. Yeah. Love them. Love the NFL Live crew. We watch every single day. But you guys have really, you with the Mac Jones, Ryan Clark with the, I'm sick of having to act like this guy's good. What? What the hell? Act Jeez. like he's good. What are we even talking yeah. about? He's in his second Say year. For the nine, 98th time, I made that comment about more in support of Mac Jones and what I think about him rather than any slight of Brock Purdy. I've said nothing but like really, really overwhelmingly positive okay. things about Brock Purdy. All right, Purdy. okay, okay. Um, happy to hear that. Overwhelming. Happy, we're happy to hear that. Yeah. Damn. Thank you, Dan. 98th time. Um, home. I think the really impressive thing about that game, San Francisco-wise, in relation to Brock was – I said, when you watch some of the plays, the, like the third down throws, and then the use of his legs, it reminded me a lot of Joe Burrow during the the Bengals Super Bowl run. I say it because of this: one, the tough, courage, like you got to get had some balls to make the throws that he made on third down yesterday. Because like these weren't, oh my gosh, Kyle schemed him up and he just delivered some something on time. Like he throws an out route to Ayuk that is sick. 
the ball he throws to Jennings. I honestly believe he feels Campbell coming from his right as he throws it back across. Because if you look, like the vision almost says throw a straight ball, but Campbell's coming off of his right, and I think he just feels him and just floats it up over the top. Unbelievable throw. Great kick. And then some of the, the, the legs plays. Like, yeah, watch Campbell come from his right, right? Like, that moment. Like, if he throws it on a line there, which I think more often than not, like, your body tells you to do it, Campbell's going to step right in front of him and pick it up. But, like, he just floats it up over it, up Jeez. over him. Like, he kind of feels him and senses him. That. That's sick. Mac, That's sick. Yeah, Mac I think, Jones. Yeah, Mac Jones has that. I think those bad. instincts yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and reactions. Jones. And then, like, some of his runs – when you watch him, like on some of the runs on third down or second down, there's no hesitation. Like he feels some type of pressure or whatnot, or he feels it close off and like, see, Ghost never underestimates your ability to not throw the football and just the reaction of it, the instinctual reaction of it. But it's all like really fundamentally sound. Like there's two hands on the football. Like, look, he goes to pull a trigger, two hands on a football, and it's just go. Like there's no, okay, I'm going to see if number two or number three. Like look how fundamentally sound that is getting through. Tuck the ball. That reminds me of Joe a lot in there. The third and four uh, for the 21-yarder. Like this run. Watch this. That's that's Joe Burrow right there. That's Joe Burrow like right there. Though. So I, I was very impressed with that. Mm-hmm. Faster though, seemingly. I think his dad was a baseball. He runs like a baseball player. Mm-hmm. He had a, a a very impressive ten yard split. I forgot what it was. Maybe like one six. Oh. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. You guys never talk about that sneaky on NFL Live. Oh, what's that athlete. about? Was your, yeah, he's a sneaky athlete. Mm-hmm. He is. A sneaky. And then the second thing in that game I thought was really good. Um, Kyle did a really good job of taking 21 personnel debut and Hawk will really appreciate this and like making it look like not 21 stuff. Like when you 21 personnel, two back, one tight end, like I think the first play of the second half, they motion over and it almost makes like a bunch and they, they run off tackle and then they go no huddle and it looks like 12 personnel and then they took 21 and the throw to Kittle on the corner route looks like 11, use checks in protection. He just did a really good job of using that one personnel and making it look in like so many different formations. His 10-yard split was the same as Lamar, I guess, top 95th percentile uh, for Brock Purdy. We haven't really seen that. They haven't really no. even watched it. We were talking about that with Jordan Love, not to change the subject, but we haven't even really seen Jordan Love no. start to skirt a little bit. Now Brock Purdy is adding to his game. He's only in his second year. Second year year, Dano, and I was happy to hear Kyle Shanahan, you know, because everything's come out, and I think Kyle Shanahan is normally just like, he's a quarterback, let's just do this. He came out and said, like, this guy is the reason why. They all heard what everybody's been saying about Brock Purdy, and I like that they've all come out and felt obligated to kind of stick up for him. It's a good team over there. Mm -hmm. Niners got a good thing going, and Brock seems like the perfect guy. Go ahead, AJ. Dan, how do you see this, the matchup with in the Super Bowl with the Chiefs offense going up against this Niners defense. What do you think the Chiefs do, and and you think they're going to try to run the ball on them? I know people have had success running the ball a little bit at times on this Niners D, but what do you think uh, Andy reading them draw up over the next couple weeks offensively? Yeah, I I think the way that we've seen Andy Reid and this Chiefs offense start to use the tight ends more and more as the season and then the postseason have gone on. Like, AJ, they used four strong a gajillion times yesterday versus the Ravens in so many different ways. And so two weeks ago it was run at the nickel for Buffalo. Yesterday was getting to four strong formation, four guys to one side of the football. They're going to have one very specific or two very specific things they want to try to attack. I do think they'll they'll use the tight ends a good good amount. I think they'll use the tight ends and the backs as pass catchers. They'll run the football, you know, like they 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 will be unapologetic about running the football because they've been more capable of it with their interior three. Um, so they'll definitely and we saw it yesterday. Detroit ran the ball out on the perimeter. Andy Reid and Matt Nagy will figure out ways to get the ball to the perimeter, whether it's designed runs like the traditional task toss cracks. We'll see some, you know, just like almost swing screen design stuff. They'll take advantage of some of the over pursuit. I think it'll be a heavy completion day for Patrick Mahomes. We'll see 75, 80% completion percentage likely just because of the style of zone that they play. Um, I, I think it. I think it's going to be a, a like a traditional dink and dunk type of game, and then there will be two or three shots where they'll try to hit. You know, take advantage of some over aggressive safety coverage with MVS just oh, making mm-hmm. absurd catches. Welcome back, MVS, to his oh, best yeah. form. Yeah. And Rasheed Rice doing his thing. Felt like as I was watching that Lions Niners game. Uh, obviously, Wilkes is you know an incredible defense coordinator, and that defense is packed. 
front four weren't getting home a lot. Nope. You know, and a lot of Olsen was talking about at some point he's going to have to think about bringing some pressure, which is something they don't love doing because if you can get home with your front four, which the Niners defense has been able to do for the last five years, seemingly, you could obviously have seven guys back in coverage who are all incredibly yeah. athletic, keep their eyes on the ball, and then dink and dunk is your point. We rally. Mm-hmm. We just rally, we rally, we rally. It almost got to a point where they almost had to change their game plan because they weren't able to get home. What was Detroit doing that was uh, kind of stumping the front four? And then once momentum gets going, Bosa's just wide open and Chase is making plays as well. That run that run yeah. game, they were able to run the wall well. Then uh, obviously that play action, that slows those guys up. Because golf, this game, and I think if you look at the big picture, when he's under pressure, he's a different quarterback. And that goes for most quarterbacks. Yeah. But under, under pressure in this game, wasn't completing barely any passes. Clean pocket lights out, you know, and they did whatever they want to do. This is a couple weeks now, back-to-back, 49ers haven't really been able to stop the run. Um, mm-hmm. So that would be definitely interesting to see how, how long they stick with in the Super Bowl with uh, Pacheco. I had a stat here from Hembo about being under pressure. Yardage, 127 yards, yeah. Yeah, 49ers, 127 yards on 15 plays of pressure. Lions, negative 13 on 10 yards, mm-hmm. or on 10 plays of pressure. Goff, certainly different, but once again, another thing for Brock Purdy, like... The guy's in his second year. You bring pressure, he's still figuring it out. He's got it. Just, uh, it's phenomenal to watch. And that defense, the Niners defense, at the end of the game, looked like the Niners defense yeah. that we kind of come yeah. to love and know. In the other game, though, a guy that didn't look anything like what we're expecting him to look like, especially this season. Yeah, Dan, we talked about it schematically, kind of what Spags did to the Ravens offense, and you kind of referenced Lamar didn't play good. Is it – how did Lamar play, and is it a playoff thing? As things get tighter in the playoffs, what do you think it is yeah. uh, now with Lamar? It's a playoff thing. I, I can't run from that. Lamar played bad. He did, and and he did not see the field well. What? Well, I do believe they threw the ball too much. There were guys. I mean, there were guys open, and for some reason, he just didn't see it. Now, again, I do think some of that was those different personnel groupings that Spags threw out there, and I do think some of that was, you know, like watching the defenders' backs turn and run to try and cover guys up so there's a little bit of lack of trust there maybe with what your eyes are telling you but Lamar didn't see the field well he didn't trust what his eyes were telling him he wasn't like convicted with what he was seeing he was very hesitant with the football like even the sack fumble I still think he's a click late he's going to throw like a big ball down the field I do think he's a fraction of a second late so um, it's it's hard to sit here and say it's not a playoff thing I don't think it was just Lamar but he played poor he didn't see the field well he didn't trust his eyes I don't think he trusted his instincts I think he he held on to the ball too long instead of taking off in some of those instances and running and just going to be an athlete and realizing like yo when when those defenders are turning and running they don't have vision on you so if you make one person or you get past that one set of arms and from a defensive lineman, you're you're by yourself. Multiple instances where he could have done that. Dan Orlovsky, wide open. Bingo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Going you know for mean? six. Yeah. Kind of just yeah. crack through. <laughs> All right. Having yeah. a phenomenal day. We appreciate you joining us. And once again, earlier today, when you said this one thing, it really was a moment, an opportunity to change the trajectory of everything going forward. I don't know. Okay. So, boom. And then you come on here, you're like, I'm never saying that again. <laughs> I never said that. No chance. <laughs> what are you talking? This is the same old Dano. What are we even? We appreciate that. Don't change. Just like MCDC on fourth downs. You're the man, Dan. It was truly, truly always a great time with you, boys. All right. When's the next time you're coming on? When's the next time you're going to ask me? Oh, see, that could have been an I don't know right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See that we're trying to stack mm-hmm. these. Yeah. We're trying to stack did you a couple. See, we're trying to get these did, things going. Go did ahead. you see his smile when he first came on? Because you heard what TJ yeah, was yeah. talking about. Yeah, that was for TJ. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, figured. What was that all Dude, about? I'm sitting there watching. I don't know. What do you like? I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm a pleasant person. TJ comes on, immediately takes a shot at me. <laughs> when was the last time you talked? I don't even know if I know TJ. I don't even know if I've met TJ. <laughs> okay, so now I may have. Yeah, I don't even know Lions? if I know him. Play the Lions. Lions? Yeah, Damn, that's just I don't think teammate. he played with me. No, I, don't, I think he got there after I was there. I think. The thing about it with like TJ and some of these other guys, like there's nothing you can do about it either, because TJ would just break you in half. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Totally. Like, which is, I run into this option. <laughs> A seven foot three. I ran into. Yeah. I mean, this is just part of life, man. Hey, yeah. Good why didn't you fight? Good move. Good move. What? Why didn't you fight? Well, first of all, Come the on. guy. 
Okay, I don't want to take a main event opportunity at WrestleMania from somebody who definitely has earned it and deserved it, and you know gotcha. dedicates their entire life yeah. to getting in there. Could so hurt somebody. who would I be? Because let's say I do happen to catch. I was a, a little bummed. I was a little bummed. Oh, you were bummed out. Bummed huh? out. I think out. about how bummed out these wrestlers would have been if if I come in there with four jobs, five jobs, and then I just rattle through the Royal Rumble and win it. And Cody Rhodes doesn't have a chance to finish the story. CM Punk Come doesn't on. have an opportunity to finish the story. Braun Breaker, who's been waiting for this opportunity Why? for a long time. Yeah. Let's say I walk in there and a seven foot three Omos, who is way too big. He's a big son of a bitch. <laughs> that thing is gigantic. That, 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 why is I was pumping myself up here. Yeah. I, I didn't know. Was, yeah. I not. So, I mean, there's a sign there. Pat McAfee is God. I'm not, but I appreciate Hey, whoever held that up, I love you. <laughs> I needed that, by the way. Because I immediately forgot it as soon as I turned. Look at that thing. What is it? What is it? It's seven foot three. And then Braun Breaker, this is a, <laughs> huh? Huh? He just Breaker oozes his energy and intensity. It's like I pulled my I pulled my hamstring just like two weeks ago running the sprint. You think I'm supposed to battle against Omos? I don't think so. I was not ready. I was not prepared. I was excited. Well, I was excited. we're off ESPN. Sports Center's in seven minutes. We'll see you tomorrow. Um, but then I get on a side of the rope, side of the ring, after I'd stepped out. And by the way, the boots almost slipped in. Dan Orlovsky, everybody thinks you're not on anymore because we're not on ESPN anymore, even though hundreds, and hundreds of thousands of people watch on YouTube and ESPN Plus every day, which is kind of a modern marvel when it comes to streaming. But in all the doofus's eyes, it doesn't mean anything, which is a whole nother conversation. But um, just talking. I wish ball. it was off a minute ago. <laughs> just talking ball or whatever yes, the case is. Uh, but when I get outside the ropes, I think about Tim McAfee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think about Sally McAfee. Sure. sure. And I think about my baby girl, Mackenzie. Sure. Your family. And my wife. And I go, family. is this what I want to have on tape? Is this what I want to have on tape? Even though I'm doing the right thing. I'm not taking any opportunities from anybody that certainly has earned it and deserved it. I'm nowhere near physically prepared to battle a seven foot fucking three guy. Who is? No way, but I'll figure it out. Fuck. I'll, fi I'll, I'll figure something out in there. That's what I'm thinking on Sally. I'm like, I'm not. I get back in there and then all of a sudden I'm not. Yeah, I am actually. I am going to have this on film. I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. I'll see you guys later. And, uh, yeah, right back to the commentators. Maybe. Table with, uh, Maybe another time. Uh, I don't think so. I don't know if the Royal Rumble is really my event. You know, because sure. as I'm getting in there, Cody Rhodes is sitting there too. Yeah. And I look yeah, in though. the eyes of Cody Rhodes as I'm walking up their steps, and it's like this guy's entire life revolves around tonight. Yeah. Look at this guy. All right. Not to mention J.D. Ladies McLaughlin. and gentlemen, Dan Orlowski. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, Dan. But, yeah. Yeah, I got out of there. Waste of a spot. Shut up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Clans. All right. <laughs> Shut up. Don't even, you know. That guy's a big dude. I remember seeing him back in the day, I think, uh, when I was down there with you. For, so he's gotten more. He is so big. Yeah. Literally. Uh, oh, he didn't flinch either. When you jump back in, you jump back in, you act like you're going to do something. He didn't even flinch. Well, didn't one move. Muscle. Well, on Braun Breaker, I think he just bounced his tits one time. Well, he had already yeah. cut like <laughs> six people in half with. Some of the most fierce spears I've ever seen yeah. in my life. Look he, at the carnage in the ring as you're getting in there. Like, there's people laying everywhere. Yeah. 23 miles an hour, that Braun Breaker guy's coming off he the ropes. He can hit. 23 miles an hour. Yeah. Tyreek Hill in he, the ring. Faster, they said. Yeah. He was clocked faster using the same device yep. than Tyreek was on the field. Now, Tyreek. He was clocked at 23? 23 mm -hmm. point something, yeah. Coming off the ropes. Slingshot. Jeez. Think about that. Yeah, and people are like, why'd you get out of there? Why the fuck did I get out of there? What do you think? Yeah. You don't well, think that guy deserves a main event spot at WrestleMania? He does. Mm -hmm. Do you think this guy in some cowboy boots? They look great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love those boots. Uh, I'm not ready to kick bro, the ass. Pros and cons. They're not great wrestling boots. Pros and cons. Man. Had you won, yeah. had you won the Rumble, who would you have chosen to face at WrestleMania? So a lot of people would just assume that I would go right at the big goose. After yeah, how, would you, how would you not? No, Seth fucking Rollins. I'm coming to you, pal. Just because I want to dance with Roman. Sure. And Seth's got a knee right now. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not, by the way, don't deserve the opportunity. Don't desire the opportunity. We'll love to watch mm -hmm. everything that takes place. But you get you pick Seth because the knee thing that's happening. Figure I, he's game for in sure. It. Yeah, but Cody wants to finish the universal finish story. The story. Like his father. I his thought father. I thought sense. Omos had it in a runaway. Yeah, then Omos and uh, Braun got eliminated within 14 seconds of me getting eliminated. <laughs> yeah, because you you gave him one of these, you know? They were yeah, so, you shook him up. They were thinking about, oh, shit, McAfee might, came, <laughs> might come back up here and give us one of these. So big, that yeah. thing. Had to feel good to be back out there, though. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. It was so cool. It's awesome. 
like the life schedule is just so absurd for good reasons. Mm -hmm. Like very fortunate, very lucky to be doing what we're doing for a living. But what we do, how long, I mean, we're every day, you know? And it's not just when we're live. We don't have an agent, you know? So like I'm dealing, literally, I have a lot on my plate on a regular basis, which is my fault, but also something that I enjoy. And the boys kick a lot of ass. So it's like we have full-time jobs every single day. And it's like hard to get travel in with the WWE. So anytime I have a chance to get back with the schedule and the opportunity where they're inviting me back, it's like, man, I can't fucking, I run. I don't walk back. I run to the plane to get there because it's great. Man, just the family that's there, mm -hmm. the crew, everybody behind the scenes. The best. It's like so cool to see. And then WWE Universe was so nice. You know, I had no idea what was going to happen because I've been reading a lot of terrible stuff about me from a lot of people mm -hmm. for the last two weeks. So... When they're like, hey, you want to come back and commentate? I'm like, yeah. They're like, uh, we're going to give an introduction early. Uh, we'll give you an intro, start the show, and then we'll be off and running. I was like, can you just sneak me in there? I don't know if you need to let everybody know in the arena, 48,044 people, that I'm there or whatever. And Michael Cole was like, why? And I'm like, I've read a lot of things about me lately. I don't know if I need to be hearing that from the crew. And they cheered. I'm very, very thankful and lucky that they do that. And uh, anytime I get, yeah, that, that person's awesome. Yep. I am not, but I appreciate that person. Anytime I get a chance to go back, it's a dream come true. I feel like a little kid. I wrote that in the thing. It's, I, I legitimately feel like a little kid and uh, so grateful for everybody over there. They're so incredibly kind to me. And I love it, man. It's awesome. Yeah, great yeah. scene. I mean, it's was that the Slim Jim section you were doing that to? Uh, the Long Boy Gang. <laughs> you talk about the LBG? Was that what it was? That was the Long Boy Gang. <laughs> this, this, that's what the Slim Jim section was? The Long Boy that's Gang. Confident? Yeah, Michael Cole said it. Who's that? Is that's that? my side gunner, I do believe. Oh, okay. He and I met each other. Uh, knows I thought him someone for else. Sure. A couple times. Corey Graves, take a seat, pal. Guy with the ref thing wants to say hello. Let me kiss my wife. Cole uh, looks great. Cole does look incredibly fit. He's been working out that's more than anybody. Not as good Tommy as Tommy Carlucci, old cuz down there. I mean, like, everybody... Where the hell was Jeff sitting? So Jeff was to the right of, uh, if from the left of the ring right there. Me and Cole had a big hug, big oh, hug. Jeff, that barely was a great, see Jeff. A great moment. <laughs> Jeff right over there is good. Just Jeff was awesome, but grass. not as awesome as the Apex Predator. I mean, he got, that was bullshit. Randy Orton's what, 275 He's it looks a, like? He, he is in unbelievable shape. <laughs> Diesel. It was awesome, man. And it was fun to work alongside Corey Graves again. Which is cool. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. there for a while wasn't a blast. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, it was like, oh, this guy hates my guts over here. A couple mm -hmm. Pittsburgh guys. Yeah, listen, dude, what are we, can we have a good time here? And then last night or on Saturday night, he was awesome. Yeah. Because his brain, good. Corey Graves' brain is a. He looks so cool. As a Yinzer, he has like a expert level brain. And then Michael Cole's the greatest of all time. So that like, I'm just sitting there and there were some people that came out. I had no idea who they were. Sure, that's gonna happen. I have no clue. I was looking. At, I was looking over at the uh, at the Trons. I'm like, what's the name here? What's the name here? And Cole and Corey are like, oh my! And I'm like, oh yeah, oh my, oh wow. yeah, who? Is that ooh, his name? Ooh, oh my! Ooh, ooh. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, this person doesn't wrestle for WWE. No, they're like not at all. No, they're somewhere else. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Sweet. Jordan Grace. Yeah. What a show. Yoked. I had no clue who that Yoked. was. Yoked. As I was going through Gorilla to get a, uh, up and out, you know, because I kind of kept it as a surprise back scene to our backstage, so I didn't really see many people. So as I'm going through there, I see her and I'm like, oh, that because she had a title yes. around and she was facing away. I'm like, holy fuck, who is jocked? Yeah. Absolutely jocked. So jocked. And then I come out there and they're like, TNA. Knockout champion. It's like, holy shit. Believe it. Hey, hey, and to the WWE's credit, nobody really talks about this much, especially in the wrestling mark world. Like, they put her over. Yeah. In the WWE Royal Rumble as the TNA knockout champion. And then Cody Rhodes going back to back for the first time in 26 years. Hadn't been done since Stone Cold Steve Austin. Right. right? And then obviously Roman Reigns wins clean. Kevin Owens got screwed. K.O. Well, he's a Kevin Owens no. got screwed. No, he's a he's a he tried cheater. to cheat. He got screwed. He Shocker. tried to he cheat. He stooped to Logan Paul's love. I mean, K.O.'s everything that's right in the wrestling world. And I thought he would go out there with grace and with. He didn't. Yeah, and Is he, this a change of tone for you or K.O.? I love K.O. Yeah. Is that oh, right? I love K.O. He's a scumbag. That's this guy who hates K.O. Yeah, Tone does not like KO because once he started doing the stunner and the swanton and everything, Tone's like, who is this guy? Well, he's all of us. That's what he is. What KO is doing? all of us. Yeah, but what about this ref? All of a sudden, he's got perfect eyes. How's he even see it? 
<laughs> so golden. How's he even say it? <laughs> you gotta, you gotta tuck those in your trunks. Oh, Everybody knows no. that. I agree, but who? How? What is this ref? Super? Like what? What is? Thank God he was there. Jeff told him yeah. to keep an eye out. Well, Jeff came in, his son of a bitch, and interrupted it all. We had a good match going. And uh, you- Logan Paul's still a United States champion. Yeah. So if you're in the continental United States, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. and Alaska, Logan Paul is still your champion. Mm-hmm. Amen. And Kevin Owens, a Canadian, almost won it, but... Can't have that. Where did, where did he hide those in yeah. his pants? Yeah. He didn't have pockets. It was around his dong. No, yeah, yeah he, he was, where Carlito had his pain. apple. I, I, was yeah, watching, was... I was watching Carlito pull his apple out. It was close. <laughs> You see him How do you even night. see him? I mean, what is he even talking about? The guy uh, had tape all over his hand before this. You know the WWE referees. You know they do the, pra- they, the eye practice drills. They do have the greatest referee crew out of all the professional sports. Yes. Mm-hmm. And congrats to Bailey winning the Women's Royal Rumble. Yeah. Here you go, Bailey. That was awesome. That was absolutely fantastic. I was lucky to be there, thankful to be there. Can't wait to get back into the WWE universe sometime. Let's take a break. Kyle Juszczyk will be on the other side. Uh... Obviously had a massive game yesterday for the Niners. Massive year this year. And he's married to a fashion god. Yeah, that's right. fashionista. So that's something to talk about. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to hear what Kyle's thinking after a massive win over the Detroit Lions. Largest comeback in conference championship game history. Wow. Wow. Now they're off to the Super Bowl to take on the dynasty that is the Kansas City Chiefs. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Take five. 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 If you're the NCAA and you're sitting in that stupid office in Indianapolis where we happen to live, it's a great city, it's a great town, and there's a dumb institution that is ruling over college football. Because if you don't want these people dancing... Do we like the NCAA? Do we like Pat? Do we love the Dukes? I wish when I was asked, like, why did you punt? I could say my subcommittee recommended I punt. Talk your shit. Talk your shit. Talk your shit. Talk your shit. against the NCAA. Let them bowl! Yeah. Let them bowl! Amen. Rest in peace, Dale. Moment of silence for Dale Earnhardt. Moment has passed. Thank you, Dale. This one's for three. AJ Hawk, $5,000! Professional life. J M U. Thank you so much for the hospitality. J M U. You understand quickly that there's idiots making decisions in every single place that you would never guess idiots would be making decisions. You don't think bowl season deserves to have this? Situation cooking behind it. College football is better because JMU's football is crushing. College is better because what their football team is doing. The community is better. And the NCAA, yet again, adds to their long list of decisions. Look at that scene, bro, in the hills of Virginia. You know what? 
Gretzky. To hell with all of them. James Madison. Right here. Right here. And that chef looks damn good. I need that guy's feet any day of the week. If you're able to bury this 33-yard field goal, kicking is easy is what you have said to kickers before. Others have on the internet. Now, 90 rocks on the line. in this city with how dumb the NCAA is. Let them bowl and let the boys dominate today. In my constitution, I have the First Amendment right to free speech. Pat has the Second Amendment right to take his sleeves off and show the bare arms all the time. <laughs> but I'm saying, if we, if we are so lucky to go undefeated this year, and we end up winning in a bowl game, if we get in, I'm going to use my First Amendment to declare the JMU Dukes national champions oh, like UCF. Yeah. I'm just going to say it and come and stop me. Time to go. It's I'm Jack. I hope it's working. All of it's working. They'll have one loss because App State is being JMU Mountaineers, baby. They've got a dog shit all over this dumb place. App State forever. Yeah, fuck you too. How about that? Hey. Why? Let's. Goal. This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice, could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this championship overreaction Monday, January 29th, 2024, hour three of the program starts now. Football! It's glorious. This hour is presented by our friends at Top Golf. Uh, it's golf, it's not golf, it's Top Golf. For a limited time, get half off golf Monday through Wednesday oh. when you book in the Top Golf app. Offer not valid at the Top Golf Las Vegas location. Okay. Restrictions and exclusions <laughs> may apply. Visit topgolf.com forward slash half off golf for details. Half off. That's pretty good love deal. that. Dude, the internet's going to love that. I've seen a lot of stuff about uh, half off's good deal. Shout out to Top Golf. We appreciate them. I think they're going to be with us all the way through the Super Bowl. Sh welcome to the party, Top Golf. Let's go, Let's Top go. Golf. Oh, the party. Speaking of, that's AJ Hawk. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Don. Cowboys turn digs is here. And a nine year NFL vet with a massive brain. Host of the Man of Man podcast and everything DB. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius J. Butler. Now joining us. Via FaceTime or Zoom or something along those lines. Satellite. Is a dude who went to Harvard. Okay? Got some stats here. Two-time first team all Ivy League. <laughs> Whoa. Not easy. No. No. Uh -uh. Not easy. No. Tough conference. You put that right on the office wall if you were to have it in some banking or capital investment yeah. office if you had one. This man said, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to continue to play football. So much so, eight-time Pro Bowl. What? Highest paid fullback in the history of the NFL. What? For good reason. He's had to do another Super Bowl. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Yuschek. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, dude? Man, hey, you got me fired up, man. Hey. Two time all, all Ivy League. That, that you're not joking. That was, that's the real deal, man. That's where it's at. Dude, imagine if you were an investment banker like all the other Ivy League football players, and right up there, yeah, every time they walked in, it just said. <laughs> 
First team all Ivy League. What were you, bum? Nothing. (laughs) First team all Ivy League. What were you, bum? Nothing. That would have been enough, you know, to get you in the door probably at one of these capital places, but instead you stick with football. Now, going to be regarded as one of the greatest fullbacks to ever exist. Obviously, an eight-time Pro Bowler. Back to a Super Bowl. Congrats on doing it, smart guy. Congrats on doing it. man. Very happy with my... uh career choice, the path I went on here. Much much better than being a banker. Well, that's all still very much ahead of you, and I assume you'll be doing something with billions of dollars, if not trillions, at some point. But right now, let's talk about this Niners team. Obviously, the connection seems to be very real. The core of that group has been around each other for a long time. New centerpiece of quarterback, which we will talk about in a bit. But yesterday, down 17 at halftime, two weeks straight, kind of starting slow. What were the conversations at halftime? Who all spoke? And was there any doubt? I just saw you post on Instagram, never in doubt. There had to be, that's the biggest in the history of a conference championship game, Kyle. Yeah, you know what? Um it was surprisingly calm in the locker room, especially on the offensive side. Uh, there wasn't a lot of, you know, hoorahs, getting at people fired up, all that sort of stuff. Um, it was still too early. We knew that if uh, if we kept it within three scores at halftime, by all means, we were in that game because we know we can score a lot of points and we can score them fast. And we just needed that spark, man. We need to come out fast. Um, and that was really kind of the message on the offensive side is, Let's just go execute. Uh, you know, th- we've been doing this stuff all year. We can put points on them quick. We know how our defense is, man. Once they get in a groove, they start turning the ball over. They start forcing three and outs. Like, we can flip this thing on its head really quick. But we knew we had to go score on that first drive. Um, and, you know, we only ended up getting a field goal, but that that seemed to be enough to, you know, kind of get us going. Yeah, big fourth down stop and then a ball off a face and then a turn. I mean, it was – Magic quickly, 17 points. We got a ball game going into the fourth. Everything you guys said seemed to come true quickly in that third quarter. Go ahead, AJ. Kyle, could you take us through uh, that unbelievable toe-tap catch you made on the sideline where Brock obviously eludes the rush. It looked like he was sacked for sure, and he finds you. Like, what what are you doing on this play, and what are you seeing when he's scrambling and thinking, like, okay, here we go. I got a chance to actually catch this ball here. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm really – I'm kind of a a last – chance outlet on that play like I, i'm just chipping i'm running a corner i'm not even in the progression but um you know brock he does he makes one of these plays a game like if you're watching the san francisco 49ers like you're used to seeing this from brock like that that rusher is coming like completely oh. unblocked he makes uh you know makes him miss gets out of the pocket uh and luckily enough i was just able to make eye contact with eye contact with them and, uh, you know, he, he ripped it, gave me a chance, and uh, there was no way I wasn't going to come up with that thing, man. And I don't get the most opportunities. Um, you know, with the guys we have on this team, we have so much talent. Uh, so my, my opportunities to touch the ball are limited. But, man, if you're going to give me one, I'm going to do everything I can to take advantage of it. Let me tell you about a fullback having those feet and those hands. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> Did he, the, the first down um, – Pylon. Pylon mm-hmm. camera. Pylon. Just from the waist down or whatever, it's like, that's not a fullback. Do you mm. see your toes dance? Ooh. Toes <laughs> dance like your Michael Jackson up on the forward lean there, right at the line of scrimmage falling for or right at the first down marker falling forward. And then your hands, that's a one-handed catch pretty much out of bounds that you kind of seal the deal. Absolute weapon, Kyle. Absolute weapon. And I know they'll say Thank you're you. not as big as other fullbacks, but like – in the run game, your ability to catch and do everything. I, I assume you and Kyle Shanahan's conversations are like pretty positive about the role that you play in his entire offense because you're a pillar Most of definitely. that thing, Kyle. Most definitely. Um, you know, Kyle and I, we've been through a lot. This is uh, seven years now we've been together, and I was part of that first free agency class that he brought in uh, to really turn this organization around, to uh, establish a culture, um, you know, to start – winning and putting together a culture of people that love each other and work hard for one another. Uh, And it means so much to me to be one of those original guys and still be here. Um, But Kyle and I, we've had so many great talks uh, behind closed doors about my role. Um, And I was, I was really appreciative of some of the stuff he said. I think it was last week or the week before um, when he had said that, you know, we got a lot of weapons on this team Uh, and Kyle, my, my talking about me, used to get a lot of more opportunities when I when I was younger. He's like, but it wasn't because he was younger. It's because we just needed him in that situation. And he knew that he still had faith in me that I can still make those plays today. 
Uh, and he, I th- believe he said, you know, when does Juice not make the play when he gets called upon? Man, so, that had to feel good. Um, that was in the media thing? It's a no. great feeling to get that from your head ball coach. Was that in the media? Yes. Oh, yeah. That's like, thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you know, because I assume there's people chirping about you being old, let alone fans, but friends and family and everything. And then Kyle. The last got, thing I ever want to hear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially a fullback position where you still got to thump people. And you've, hey, you're phenomenal to watch, pal. You're phenomenal. Just a free Catholic. You're not supposed to be as smart as you are, as tough as you are, and as athletic as you are. You're an anomaly, pal, which is why I assume you're able to land fashionista icon. The wife <laughs> is crushing it right now, Kyle. Absolutely crushing it. This is big. She is murdering it, Pat. She is such a bigger deal than I am. <laughs> uh, when I walk into the stadium now, like there, there are more signs for my wife than there are for me. Uh, yesterday, I saw multiple signs, you know, Kristen Juszczyk is our NFL queen. You don't see nothing for me anymore. I mean, she's she's got all the fame, but she deserves it, man. She's doing so good. She's working her tail off, uh, and, you know, big things are coming for her. Okay, so for those of us that maybe don't fully understand the business behind it, or is this a hobby, or what, is she launching a store, a boutique? What? How does this – because everybody There's wants the, her shit, I, yeah. feel. I feel like everybody wants her shit right now, Kyle, right? Am I reading it right? Yeah, oh, oh my gosh. The, the amount of people that have reached out – um trying to get something it's been astronomical uh we're still honestly we're still trying to figure out exactly how we're going to approach this they they will be available eventually um but right now we're just kind of trying to work out the whole business end of it whether she's going to pair with a company whether she's going to do this on her own um it's really been a lot uh and we're just trying to digest it right now because you know you what she's been so great about is I mean, the opportunities she's gotten there are just absolutely insane. But she knows right now the number one thing is we want to go win a Super Bowl. We've been working for this together for 10 years, you know, and that's that's number one on her list. So we're going to take care of that. And then she's going to figure out what exactly we need to do to get her business completely running and, you know, taking care of her stuff. I love that. I love to hear that. Great tag team. Seems like you got a lot of those over in the San Francisco 49ers locker room. Whenever you said that you were tasked with being the first class to build a place that really likes each other and a team that's a culture, it's radiating through the screen everywhere else. And we're happy to hear that your wife's, you know, just building custom pieces too. Yeah. You know, then you're not committing anything. Right. Hey, you don't have to have like 500 pieces of anything. Just Mm -hmm. custom spots. The allure of it builds because there's only so many of them. Not that I have any clue about that business at all. Nope. <laughs> at all, but good, pretty yeah, good. Setup. I'll, I'll, I'll wake up. I'll wake up. No joke. At four in the morning, and she's still downstairs working. <laughs> like she has been grinding, cutting up those jerseys, putting it together. Like, I mean, she is committed to this thing right now, and I'm so proud of her. She has just been working her absolute tail off. Hey, showcasing how to be a good husband too. Did you see every single post was like, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, who made that? <laughs> that was awesome to watch. Romance still thriving. Chivalry's not that, especially with the football dudes. Go ahead, Tone. Yeah, Kyle, we referenced it earlier a little bit. Uh, a couple slow starts the last couple weeks. Um, any idea why? Any of you guys thought about, I don't know, maybe injecting like Red Bull or more smelling salts or anything like that to <laughs> maybe not have to come back from down 17? Yeah, maybe just meth. Man. I don't know if you can get any more smelling salts. I think George Kittle sniffs all of them before (laughs) anyone else can get to them. But, uh, yeah, ideally, we would like to get off to a little faster start. Um, For whatever reason, that hasn't been the case these last two weeks. But um, definitely something we're going to address, you know, going into this this next game. Um, But fully confident and and however we need to handle it that we'll be able to pull this thing off. Okay. I... um... The first bye week when you're the number one team. Yeah. And then you guys play against how you played against Green Bay. And then what happens right here? Is there anything to that? You're a smart guy, Harvard guy. What, you know, is there anything to the rust thought or maybe mentally checking out for a couple of weeks and then trying to check back in mentally whenever there's a team that has been living off desperation for the last five, six weeks? And same with this Detroit Lions team that's been riding momentum. It's hard just to flip the switch, but you guys are obviously talented enough to do that. Is there anything to that, you think? Yeah, I mean, it's a genuine question that I honestly, even going through it, I don't know exactly what the right answer is. Um, I mean, we had a unique situation this year that even, you know, in week 18, not all the starters were even playing. The starters that were playing played like a little bit. Then you have that week off. And it's like we didn't even take 
it really wasn't like a week off. Like we practiced hard. We were mm. in pads, like full practices. Um, so, I mean, it's hard to say we, but we definitely did have a lot of guys, um, you know, they're coming back from, you know, they've been out from injuries from a while. So maybe there is, you know, a knocking the rust off element there. Um, but it's, it's really hard to say because there's so much value to being healthy and, uh, having that rest and being fresh. So it's just like, yeah, I, I don't know what the right answer is. In our world, it's a constant conversation. And if you feel one way, you can feel justified to be 100% right. Mm -hmm. And if you feel the complete opposite way, you too are grandstanding as if you're 100% right, yeah. which is why it's going to be talked about. But you earned that rest. And then you only needed five minutes against Packers. Yeah. And then against the Lions, you only needed 20, seems like. Yep. So maybe you guys don't even need a full 60. Yeah. Maybe you guys are doing it better <laughs> than everybody else. d has got a question for you, Kyle. Yeah, you guys are an absolute yeah. headache for defenses when it comes to game planning because of the you know unique assortment of weapons you guys have obviously you cmc debo can all do different things george as well um uh, but with brandon Ayuk, what's his ascension been like mm -hmm. as that wide receiver his route running is, is amazing obviously his hands he had the great concentration the deep ball you know 50 yard catch his past game but what's been going on i guess behind the scenes with his success these last couple years kind of becoming that wide receiver one on the outside yeah man brandon has taken it to a whole nother level this year his route running, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to start some sort of list here, but he's got to be, a, you know, on the at the don't very leave top anything of the, off. The, the, don't <laughs> leave anything off. Look, this is he's like got to be one of the best route runners in the NFL, man. He is really truly special, and like you said, he really has become that wide receiver one. Like he is that guy that he can go out there and he can beat man coverage against anybody. He's dynamic. He's a playmaker. I mean, the the stats are insane. I, I think he finished. What was his seventh in the NFL in yards, but he was like 30th in target. Third fewest at, um, catches of like those guys. Like it, it's insane the efficiency that he's had and just what an incredible athlete and and what a hard worker he is. I mean, it's been really cool. I've I've had a locker next to um, Brandon for the past four years and uh, his rookie year uh, during training camp, we both pulled ha our hamstrings at the same time. So like, I really feel like I, and at the time, like we're going through uh, rehab together and I really got to know him um, as a young guy and ha have been with him throughout this whole thing. And I am so proud of like the man that Brandon's become because he is such a leader on this team. And when he makes big plays, like everybody feeds off that energy. Like he just has this charisma to him and he's a freaking playmaker and we would not be where we're at today without Brandon because he, he really is that number one receiver. Fun to watch. And uh, also number two play on SportsCenter Top 10, that right. uh, off-the-face catch. Not number one? Not number one. Hmm. Lamar yeah. threw a completion to himself. Oh, uh, I watched, yeah. fair enough. Fair, fair. I watched his locker mate, uh, neighbor, Brandon Ayuk, watch himself not make number okay. one. Yep. Seems like he's a hilarious human, huh? Yeah, guy, yeah good moxie. Very, very funny. Um, yeah, I don't know who does the voting on these Sports Center's top ten, man. I mean, well, actually, yeah. I think I said a guy's name uh, one time on this show, and then <laughs> there was quite backlash <laughs> uh, to it all. <laughs> but um, let's talk about another human on your particular team. We're talking about backlash. Second year, Brock Purdy, and we saw, we heard. Um, obviously, we heard Fred Warner in his post game interview say this. Heck of a game manager. Wow. Manage the heck out of that game, boy. <laughs> he the reason we're going to have a chance to win us a ring. I love him. And then we saw your tweet about Brock Purdy managing to get you the ball uh, on that fantastic, ridiculous play that he made, and you caught the ball. As a I mean, just everything he does is seemingly great, and he's only in his second year. Great catch by you as well. He's only in his Appreciate second it. year in this entire thing, and that kind of gets left out of the conversation because the expectations, I think, for your team are so high. What do you see behind the scenes, though, that maybe people that don't understand the Brock Purdy stuff don't really get? Like, because on the field, from what I'm watching, I see energy. I see him getting mad at people, at teammates, like holding people accountable. I see him getting exciting. I see, or getting excited. I see him making the right decision. I see him putting the ball in a keyhole. Yesterday, I saw him scrambling and running all over the place. Like, everything on the field seems to be like, hey, this is a guy. Behind the scenes, we don't get to see much or hear much of him. What is he like? We know he dresses like somebody who's either Evan Fox or somebody that goes to Harvard on his way into the office to sell some accounting, but uh, some accounting job. But what is he like, and what do people kind of miss? You think in the whole judgment of him? 
Well, uh, first off, I appreciate you going to bat for him last week. Um, the hate for him, I, I don't understand it. I can't figure it out, man. Like, if you watch 49ers football, if you've watched it the last two years and you watch Brock Purdy play, like, I, I don't understand where you can even bring the hate in. Like, this guy has been incredible. Like, he is a playmaker. And th- this game manager tag, it, it's baffling. Um, you guys are running with it, though, look- huh? In the locker room, everybody's like, you guys are running with it, obviously. Because I think oh, yeah. Bosa even said he's the greatest game manager of all time. <laughs> I, 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 it seems like you all are kind of mocking it right now. Yeah, I mean, you got to have fun with it. Um, you know, we always say, you know, ignore the noise. But, you know, we're all humans. It's 2024. Like, we hear at least some of this stuff. We're not keyed into every single word. But, you know, you're going to hear some of it. Um, but... Behind the scenes, I mean, Brock, he is the most humble, hardworking guy I've been around. Um, I mean, we'll have install meetings and, you know, we break up. You're going off to your next meeting and Brock is still sitting in his chair looking at that play sheet. Like everyone is like out of the room and he's still just dialed in looking at it. And it's every single day like that. Like he is so locked in and so serious, like he takes this job so serious. Like anytime he speaks to the team, it's always about how he doesn't want to let us down. He doesn't want to let down the guys that have been doing this for so long. And he just has a maturity about him and an understanding of, you know, the magnitude of this and how important it is and um, how tough it is to get these opportunities. So I appreciate that from him so much. Um, But man, I, I truly, truly don't understand the hate for him. And I, I, everything, all the numbers, if you watch them, like they go against every narrative. But people, I don't know if it's if it's the draft, um, you know, being the last guy picked in the draft, if it's because he's not. you But know, then the if it's the last five. guy, if it's the last guy in the draft, then you're allowing then you're just a mark pretty much to be like the NFL scouts know everything that they're talking about. Then you're like, you're a bomb <laughs> if that's how you're thinking. Right. Yeah. So like every single reasoning for thinking, I could counter argue to make it sound like you're a bum. If that's how you go about forming your opinions, you're a mark. You're actually not intelligent every single time. I don't understand. 100 percent. Honestly, anybody who who come out when they come at them with this hate, like in in my mind, you don't you don't understand football like you're you're not getting it. So um, whatever people can say what they want. But this guy just led us to the Super Bowl. And he's going to be the reason that, you know, if we win this game, it's going to be because of Brock Purdy. Oh, hey, that's a sweet quote right yeah. there. And Brock Purdy hears everybody sticking up for him, too. Does he keep the noise out mostly? Sounds like he's super mature, locked in. Has had to have heard some of this, though. Had to have. You guys yeah, have- I mean, we're all human, so you're going to hear it. Um, and we live in that age of social media that, you know, you're going to see some things. But he is fantastic at uh, diverting that and really just focusing on, you know, what are his guys saying? And the people that really matter, Uh. the people that are around him, work with him every day, like how do they feel about him? And you see all of us, we're all going to bat for him, um, online, in person with him. Like that's our guy. Like we love Brock and he just, he gives us all opportunities and that's all you can ask for. That perspective about only appreciating the feeling of the people that care for you and that you care about is a very mature one, which is what we've seen from Brock seemingly since day one. Last pick of the draft, mm-hmm. if he stinks in practice, he's getting cut. He's yep. playing in the UFL. Yeah, He's playing in the UFL. <laughs> he stinks in practice. Now in his second year, back-to-back NFC championships and in the Super Bowl. It's a beautiful story. It's going to be a movie someday. We need to appreciate it. Go ahead, A.J. Hawk. Kyle, when you were uh, on the sidelines watching uh, your defense play, were you surprised at all a couple times when the Lions may have gone for it on fourth down? I mean, yeah, definitely. We we had talked about it going into the game that these guys were going to take chances. They're going to take risks. You know, be ready for some flea flickers like they ran, some double reverses, some fake punts, you know, going for it in, um, you know, sketchy situations. So we kind of expected that. Um, honestly, I was thinking um, on the sideline, like, man, I hope they do go for it uh, because that that was just going to give us an opportunity to get back in the game. Um, you know, if they do kick those field goals, that's that's going to make it tough. They make it a three score game again in the second half. Uh, that's hard to overcome. Um, I'm at the end of the day, uh, you know, if they do get it, that that obviously would have hurt. Um, but I'm happy that they took the risk and you know, gave us a chance to get back in it. Dan Campbell, have you got a chance to meet him? I haven't. 
No, I haven't. But I, I mean, a ton of respect for the guy. And look what he's built. Uh, it's hard not to respect him. Like, I mean, as blue collar as they come, says all the right stuff. Seems like he's got respect of all his players. So, um, you know, it, it seems like he's doing some good, really good stuff there. Feels like your team and their team kind of built in the same image, mm -hmm. you know? So let's, we're going to try to be explosive. We're going to try to run. Or we're going to try to be uh, hard nose. We're going to try to run the ball, have some explosive plays if we need it. Feels like what the Lions have tried to build, not saying that they mimicked what the Niners, obviously everybody should try to do what you guys have done, but similar philosophies feels like. Same with the Ravens. Mm -hmm. Similar philosophy. Yeah. Same with the Chiefs yep. this year. Similar philosophy. Everybody's trying to go back to that hard nose style of football. Have you experienced that and have you seen that as obviously a team that has basically never wavered in this particular style of football? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, it's it's no surprise that those are the four teams, you know, that are left at the end of the year. At the end of the day, like football is about physicality. You can't avoid it. Um, even as we, you know, spread the field out, guys get lighter, they get faster. Like at the end of the day, you got to hit somebody. You got to put your face on someone. Um, and I think it's the teams that embrace that uh, will continue to be the successful ones. How do you feel this late in? Feel good? I feel fantastic, Pat. I really do. Um, I, I I don't know what it is. I've tapped into something um, that I, I feel better at 32 than I did at 26. I, I just really seem like to have figured out what my body needs. Uh, and I, I'm ready to keep this thing rolling for a long time. You doing like red light therapy in the morning, cold tub, hot tub, we eating special? Every day. Every day. You got to get in that cold tub up to the neck. I'm in that red light twice a day, every day. Wow. Um, lots of different things. Man. What's the diet? What's the diet? Are we on a special diet right now? Um, it's nothing too crazy, honestly. Like I, I, I keep it pretty low dairy. That's kind of like my only restriction. I'm, I'm obviously eating good. Um, I do grow a lot of my own food. Like I grow a lot of my own vegetables. Which in the um, kitchen, like been, you have one of those things that hangs over the counter. Or are we talking back? I have a hydroponic garden in my uh, yes. in my living room. So hot, it's Harvard, pretty cool. So hard. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this, this is it right here. How are we growing? We, we're pretty good. We got a green thumb over in that. Oh yeah, yeah. I've I've been doing it for years. Um, but I mean, I, th this is the science behind it. Like homegrown vegetables have up to two and a half times the amount of nutrients than the stuff that you're buying from the stores, just because stuff that you buy from the stores, it has to get picked so much earlier. And then it's sitting on a truck for weeks and yeah. all that until it gets to you. And it's not getting that sunlight. It's not getting that nutrients. Um, so we try to, you know, stay away from that and eat as much as I can that I actually make. Yeah. And it feels like you just dropped us into another war there, but I want to let you know I'm on your side. I wanna, whenever yeah, this whole thing it. goes, <laughs> I want to let you know I'm on your side. I don't know if this guy's grown his own vegetables, but certainly health is a conversation. Go ahead, Ty. <laughs> yeah, Kyle, uh, we had George on last week, and he said leading up to the Packers game, just based on like practice and everything, that he thought Debo was going to go for like 100 yards and three touchdowns, and obviously he gets hurt there early. And it was pretty clear that you know what he is to you guys' offense like is imperative in terms of moving guys around. So a lot of people were assuming that maybe that had to do a little bit with the way the Packers game shook out. Obviously, Debo plays yesterday. Uh, what is his health looking like moving forward? And also just how important is he to the offense overall? Because obviously George saying something like that, we know how incredible Ayuk and you and McCaffrey and all those guys are, but it really does seem like Debo is kind of one of the guys who like you guys, everyone looks to in terms for you guys to really get going. Yeah, I mean... Debo is such a centerpiece of this offense. And uh, I spoke earlier about how um, Brandon gets everyone fired up when he makes plays. I mean, Debo, oh my gosh, every every time he touches the ball, he seems to, to run somebody over. Guys seem to bounce off of him. Um, and that gets all of us fired up. As far as health, I mean, he looks incredible. Like he, he came out of there healthy. Uh, it just so happens that after one of his plays, I was blocking for him on a screen. I helped him up. And I slapped the hell out of his shoulder <laughs> right where he was hurt. Hey, welcome Let back, me. man. Boom. <laughs> you know how that is. Or like, so a guy gets dinged in the head and you slap him across the helmet. Good job, buddy. You know, I apologize, but uh, he uh, it didn't even seem to phase him. So uh, I think he's going to be good to go. But I, the thing with Debo is like when he's out, it's such a trickle down effect because he plays so many different roles and we put him in so many different places that it's very game plan specific. And so when he's not in there, 
you're not just losing one position. You're losing multiple where a lot of different guys have to step in now and take over that role. Um, so if we can have him healthy and out there, one, it just adds such a dynamic piece to our offense because he's by far one of the best humans on earth with the ball in his hands. It's absolutely incredible. Um, but two, it just it, it makes it so much easier for us as an offense because he can handle so many different positions and just like the mental part of it. George Kittle said last week, whenever Debo gets hurt early, he said, I was expecting with our game plan Debo to have three touchdowns. So whenever whenever Debo gets kind of removed from the situation, all of a sudden you need three to four different people, right, to make up for what he's doing. And they haven't gotten a lot of reps either, I would assume, in those particular plays. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it, it you have a limited amount of time to practice and guys, you know, the starters are obviously going to get those reps because, you know, they need them. We're not expecting them to go out early. So, you know, that that can make it difficult when a guy has to leave uh, early on in the game. Greenlaw had a it looked like a stinger slash maybe a dislocation of a shoulder. And then I saw what they decided to do was you got four chains on. We need to take Mm-hmm. We need to take at least one of these chains off Please. on the sideline. <laughs> he seemed to go right back in there. I don't, I don't know. Yep. If that, so maybe that's the answer. Maybe you wear four chains, have an injury, take one off. You're all good. Your entire team seems to be dogs, though. That 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 is the feeling that we get outside in. You guys take pride in that, I assume. There's no question, and and man, I, I sound like a broken record of like guys that get the team fired up when they make big plays. But Dre Greenlaw, okay. another one of those, like. Dre is by far my favorite person to watch on defense. Looks like AJ Hawk out there. Whoa. Um, Christian and I always joke about it. We're sitting on the sidelines and like Dre is, he is so fun to watch because it doesn't seem to matter what position his body is in. He always gets a hard hit on that running back. Like he always, whether he's in the open field, whether you know, guys are uh, coming, like colliding into one another. He always gets that hit. He always gets that punch at the end. And he brings such a physicality to the game. But he's also like absolutely incredible in space. Like anytime uh, somebody breaks the pocket or even like a, a receiver has a jet sweep in the open field, he always seems to get there. Like he's very deceptively fast, very deceptive athlete, like. Man, I think Dre is one of the best playmakers in the NFL on defense. Like, he gets this team going, and he has just been playing out of his mind. Yeah, your team is filled. Like, obviously, you're in the Super Bowl. There's only two teams left, so the teams are going to be good. That is that is how it goes. But you start looking across the board at your team, everybody seems to have the same mentality as well. And it's like everything that John Lynch seemingly and Kyle Shanahan seemingly wanted with a team – Every single position has it, including left tackle. Go ahead, Con, man. Yeah, Kyle, obviously, you know, it means a lot for the guys who lost that Super Bowl in 2019 to go back and, you know, kind of redeem the the entire team. But what was it like for some of those guys that weren't with the team then? And this would be, you know, one of their first Super Bowls. Like the scene of Trent Williams was incredible after they won. And then you think about other guys. You know, Javon Hargrave lost the Super Bowl last year, and now he's, you know, with you guys going back. You know, how is that? post game in the locker room and just you know the the emotions from the team as a whole after you guys you know get the job done yeah man i mean that's the thing with the nfl like you can talk to any player out there and everyone has an interesting story like it, everybody has gone through some shit to get here um and it it's awesome for you know myself george uh fred eric bosa like all us guys that went through it in 19 um, when we got to the Super Bowl, like this wasn't a redemption story to get back here and have an opportunity to, you know, redeem ourselves, but also how awesome it is for guys that we've brought in, um, you know, like Christian, like Javon, um, like uh, Mooney is now on our side, you know, like they all have these individual stories. And um, yesterday when that when that clock ticked zero and you know, you, you're slamming your heads together. And it's just like, we're going to the effing Super Bowl, brother. Like, we did this together. Whoa. Like, it's just such you a You guys said fucking moment. or effing, actually? What was yeah, it? I don't, yeah, I don't know what the rules are here on this show, you know? My nephew's watching. He's 11. I, I don't don't wanna, say it, kid. Fine. Don't say it, kid. <laughs> which, which I will say, you've had quite an influence uh-huh. on uh, uh, my family's household. No. Uh, my my 11 year old nephew Weston, uh, quarterback for his flag football team, 
just won his flag football championship. Hell yeah. And oh. he reminds me, he is not a champion. He is a champion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Congrats on the championship, cuz. What's his name? Weston. Weston is a beast, man. He he, uh, he, he's spinning. the quarterback for his team. He is he is dedicated. He wants to take over, uh, you know, Uncle Juice's shoes. And uh, I, excited for him in the future. Weston's a chompy and has been since he was born. He's um, a chompy. Yeah, I, I absolutely know that. <laughs> Trent, the weapons are just on top of each other. You guys haven't even really done much of the Trent Williams pool shit no. this year. You know? Move Where on. you put the most violent human on earth in motion. That's cool. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Hey, we're sa saving it for the biggest game of the year. <laughs> oh, could you imagine Spags just being like, all right, here's the deal, boys. They haven't done it much, but the fucking big one. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's going to he's gonna start coming across. I can't wait to see what you guys do, how you handle it all. Congrats on getting back to the Super Bowl. You all deserve it in abundance. We appreciate you, buddy. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for all your support. So fired up for this week, man, and uh, I'm sure I'll be talking to you again soon. I hope so. Yeah, we'll be. You guys are staying yeah, way, way out there, way, way out there from what the reports were out in Vegas. You, you've heard. I, you know what? I'm interested. I'm, we're going to get all that information in the next day or two. Um, I, we we practiced against the Raiders in this this uh, preseason, and so we we've already spent a week in Vegas, and we've done that whole thing. So. I'm interested to see if we'll be in the same hotel as we were last time or if we're going to be out by uh, UNLV or something like that. They're saying like 25, 30 miles. You guys are out. There's a lake. It's, I don't know if it's your yeah. team or the Chiefs are in. They're saying yeah. the thir 30 miles looks out, nice. 25, 30 miles. It looks beautiful. It does look beautiful, but it's way out there. Hey, we we got to focus on the game, so I think it'll be okay for us to be away from the strip. All right, sounds good. If you want to put in a red or black or a number call, though. Yeah. Gotcha. We'll, we'll be over there. Mm -hmm. We'll be right in the middle of it. Won't be able to play. You're the man. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Juszczyk. Hey, Kyle. Wow. Whole team. Mm -hmm. Dogs. Yeah, and he's a super genius. Like, yeah. he, That guy is so fucking smart just listening to him talk. And it's not just like human smart, football-wise. Yeah, yeah. The way he uses his leverage and the way – the things that Kyle Shanahan has going, I think like two years ago when In the Trenches started – AQ Shipley oh, yeah. was like, hey, wherever this guy goes is where the ball is going to end up yep. at. They are running. And he said, I've been with Kyle for seven years. We've been through a lot. It's like Kyle Shanahan has had a lot of concepts and ideas for a fullback that happens to be fast, mm -hmm. as fast as a yep. running back, and also has the ability to block like a fullback. And they've done it with him. And uh, he's changed so many games because of his ability. And now... It sounds like he thinks this is the deepest they've been and the most ready they've been. Good for the Niners. And they got Brock. They got Brock calling, mm -hmm. the, you know, pulling the trigger and uh, just coming out of the huddle because obviously a defensive coordinator, they got it down and distance. They got the personnel grouping in the huddle. Obviously, you know the score and all that. But once they break that huddle, like Juice can be out wide, uh, Kittle can be in the backfield, C Mac can be out, Debo. So it's just so many different mental gymnastics you got to go through as a defense. Pre snap. Yeah, so yeah. post, and that's, you know, in a couple seconds when they're coming out of the huddle, getting lined up, and then you know Shanahan, they always shift in motion, so that's another set of issues you got to deal with. Um, so I, I can't wait to see this chess match between uh, Kyle Shanahan and Spags. So Brett Veach, former, what are you, he's from Pennsylvania? Uh, GM for the Chiefs? I think so. Football, I think he played wide receiver. Didn't he? Did we look this up? Some college, some small college. In my head, I'm thinking of some small college. Yeah. Mount Carmel, Delaware? PA. Mount okay. Carmel, PA. Delaware he went to. Okay. And and Lynch, obviously, former player. Like, the way... Hall of Famer. Yes. Yeah. Hall, not just a player. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, player. Stud. The 47. Whenever you see it. Mm -hmm. Like, that is who it is. But the way they've built these teams, just so good. Yeah. Why doesn't everybody do that? That's a good question. Yeah. Why doesn't everybody just do that? Why doesn't everybody just build the 49ers? <laughs> And draw. What no, are we doing? Like, no, with juice though, with juice, you'd say, hey, hey, you know, fullbacks are fullbacks are not don't play huge prominent roles on on a lot of teams in the NFL. Why don't you just get a guy like like a use check? Well, because there's only yeah. one use check. That's yeah, the this is what the Colts need to do. Get a fucking use check. Simple as that. And get a, and Patrick Mahomes. I think. Oh. And you're set. Yeah. And then we need a Kelsey or a Kittle. Yep. Go. Seems mm -hmm. like that is a part of every team. You trade a couple picks for the best running back in the league. Yep. Middle of the season, yep. they trade for Christian McCaffrey. Do yep. you remember? And then he became option one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Not only in the backfield, throwing the ball, yep. catching the ball. Mm -hmm. In that entire team, the immaturity of that locker room to take in Christian McCaffrey oh, yeah. and then Christian McCaffrey be the star. And we're talking about all these other stars. Ayuk was there. Debo was there. Kittle was there. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, yep, this guy's now the star. And everybody's like, well, okay, I guess. If this is going to help us win games, let's do it. It's like that mindset. 
is not normal, especially when you got big names everywhere. And they've had a couple contract things that have taken place over the last couple of years. But as soon as that gets settled, it seems like they're all, mm -hmm. boom, we're just moving along here. It's beautiful. It's it's remarkable what Lynch has built. They got to win one, though. Yeah. That's which is the next statement every single time, AJ. Especially with Brock on a rookie contract, all of that. Yeah. They, I'm sure over these next, you know, two weeks, they will feel that. They'll feel it mounting. How do you, let's see who handles the pressure. Schefter brought it up earlier. When Patrick Mahomes on a rookie contract, they went to the Super Bowl 1 1. Joe Burrow on a rookie contract, went to the Super Bowl. Lost one. Right. Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts, rookie Super Bowl. They make it. Uh, rookie contract, they make it. They lose one. Justin Herbert, rookie contract. They didn't make it. They didn't win a playoff they game. They didn't win a no. playoff Well. You know, that's the difference. That's the difference there. And that's what Harbaugh's going in to figure out. Yep. And I think he will be able His to. His job. Hey, Schefter said earlier, if it wasn't Harbaugh, it would have been Vrabes. Yeah, and then he kind of alluded to maybe some surprise hirings as well with what? Seattle and the Commanders? Definitely surprised because all of us just have Ben Johnson at the Commanders and Dan Quinn at Seattle. Seemingly, from the jump, this what has been the have? conversation. And then he said, I would bet at least one of those is not going to be the case. Maybe two. And then he said, mm -hmm. Bill Belichick hasn't been mentioned for either job yet. It was like... And there, well, there was a commies. He got mentioned, but the mention was we are not going mm -hmm. after him. And they still have yet to find their guy. <laughs> yeah, Seattle yeah, has that not mentioned. I found it suspicious, or not suspicious, just weird. Uh, I think it was yesterday. Uh, Little Latte, Jordan Schultz, uh, reported that Dan Quinn is definitely going back to the Cowboys if he doesn't get a head coaching job. So was that like information came out like, hey, Dan's not getting this job, so you can report that he's potentially going back to the Cowboys mm -hmm. if he doesn't get a head coach. So he goes back to the Cowboys. Good for them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Aaron Glenn. And Ben Johnson seemingly going to be back for the Lions. Good I for them. That's huge. At least one of them, for sure. And one of them's definitely. And Mike a lot of, McDonald. A lot of people DC are thinking McDonald's going to get the – Seattle? I don't know. I mean, Vrabel. Why wouldn't Vrabel be in Seattle? Like, that That feels like it makes a lot the of The interview? Sense. Well, Schneider's in charge now of everything, right? Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, but the uh, non-football people kicked out Pete, so do uh, they, want, right. they want Vrabes? Not football people. People forget. I can explain to you, even you guys. I can explain something to you, and you're still not going to fully get it. No offense, he said. Yeah. <laughs> to the radio people. That True. Was awesome. that, that, was, was, that was That's like the first Pete Carroll thing I've ever heard where he's been like, yeah. There's levels. You guys don't get it. I'm you smarter just, than you. Don't you. Get it. Yeah. you don't get it. You don't get it. Oh, that was beautiful. All right, a couple other stories happening around the NFL that we haven't got a chance to chat about. Kellen Moore is now the offense coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. Okay. Go, Kellen. Vic Fangio. Defense coordinator for the Eagles, fresh out of Miami, which allegedly, you know, uh, players, and he did not mesh well via numerous yep. reports, uh, kind of the case. He's in Philadelphia. Now Kellen Moore, offensive coordinator for Jalen Hurts in the Philadelphia Eagles. Sirianni reloads quickly yeah. with two people. I think we all have massive amounts of respect for how they go about doing their business. Now Kellen Moore, obviously very pass-happy um, coordinator, I think is what the MO is on him. Yeah. Jalen Hurts is going to have to figure some stuff out there to get back to what he was a year before. Another year of health. They got weapons. We – I – think these were great hires yeah personally feel like the Eagles got better you agree I do I like Kellen Moore it's just guys got to click you got to mesh and I, I just hate and we talked about it you talked about it earlier every team uh changing over the OC since 2022 that's wild but um another quarterback now with another OC in a young career same thing's been going on with Justin Herbert I mean it's no excuse that's just what the NFL is at this point you got change and, and get to know different guys. So I'm interested to see how that dynamic plays out with Kellen Moore. And Vic Fangio like going over there has to be a good thing, better than what we saw this past season, right? Should be, yeah. But think. where where do you think Patricia ends up? Does he have a gig in the NFL? His whole thing was that he wasn't going to sign until Bill signed. So now it's kind of like a purgatory for Matt hmm. Patricia at the moment. Yeah, because who knows what Bill's going to do. Patriots still need an OC? Uh, they do. Uh, <laughs> Matt Patricia's not, not on the list? I, I don't know. I, I cannot tell you that he, he looks younger. He does. He, yeah, he's jacked right now. We, we know the Patriots are looking young at the coaching uh -huh. staff. Yeah. We don't know what a yoked Matt Patricia can do on the offensive side of the ball. As we're just talking about similar coordinators, Niners keep Wilkes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he's not going anywhere, mm -hmm. right? No. Nope. Seemingly. Yeah, he, no, I don't think so. Doubt it. Which, awesome. For them. For them, yep. And then Shanahan stay in. Mm-hmm. They might lose their uh, passing game corner, Kubiak. Yeah, oh, yeah, those guys are the ones. Like I mentioned, it the, the, the Patriots are going to look are looking at those guys now for OCs. I assume they're not the only team. Yeah, I assume the Steelers Clint, will. Clint too. Kubiak. Yep. 
Is that who's there? Okay. Yeah, he's a hot commodity. But how many of those guys, especially Kubiak's? now on the Chiefs and the Niners, are just going to get passed because of the fact that they're still coaching? Well, the Rams, right? The Rams is uh, the... The, Ram, the Rams passing game coordinator went to Atlanta with Raheem. Okay. Um, and is the enemy anywhere? Huh? Where's the enemy? He had an interview with the commanders, I think, in person, but I don't know if he's... Uh, Steelers have interviewed Gerard Johnson, who is the quarterback coach for the Texans. He's also, I believe, interviewed maybe in New England or Philly. Yep. Uh, and then Artie Smith got an interview with the Steelers this weekend as well. And uh, I heard Steelers fans are not happy about the Artie Smith interview. Well, no, they're not. They are really, really interview. not. Come on. Um, which boggles, boggles my mind because every We're Steelers fan, uh, <laughs> let's get back to the Steeler way. Artie Smith, I pulled it up, uh, as a play caller, had the third, second, third, ninth, and his first year in Atlanta was 31st uh, rush game, but normally a top five running attack, which, you know, who wants that? Not Steelers. That's not a notoriously Steelers fan thinking thought process. I mean, you can respect it after seeing Mason Rudolph sling that pill. Yeah, true. I, I wouldn't want him to run the ball either. I yeah, want let's Mason. get Cliff Kingsbury in. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> let's run this thing wide open. Mm -hmm. Pew, pew, pew shots. Let's like get Hal Mummy maybe in here. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So maybe run this maybe entire Graham Harrell. Bring Lester. Graham Harrell up. I'd be pissed if what? Graham needs to win some. You know, he went to West Virginia. Well, it's not Tim Lester. I mean, That's what not about the, Tim Lester? You the, could bring Tim Lester in. Now, let's talk about the good hirings of the weekend. The Iowa Hawkeyes have hired an offensive coordinator who is a proficient offensive play caller. No. Just his resume and record says this guy is the guy. Tim Lester's final year <laughs> as a head coach at Western Michigan in 2022 offensive ranks out of 131 teams. Uh, 122nd and 121st. And then Lester's <laughs> final year as offensive coordinator at Syracuse 2015. Uh <laughs> 80th and 117th place. A peculiar hire, says Ben Stevens. And, uh, Come on. <laughs> <laughs> got our guy, must have a great baby. interview. He had a great we interview. got our guy. It's just like Matt Canada getting hired to the Steelers. <laughs> All the Steelers fans, first thing they do is they just go, oh, let's see what this guy's done that's going to be taking over our team. <laughs> He's been horrible everywhere. That couldn't score at LSU. How's this guy? <laughs> yeah. How's this guy get a job anywhere? And then I see the Iowa hiring, and I was in the middle of some stuff as it was taking place. I looked down at my phone, and I saw I just laughed. It's literally all I could do mm -hmm. was just laugh about this being the decision that the Iowa Hawkeyes make. How do you feel about it? He's going to change everything whenever he gets there. I love it. We got our guy. I mean, it's the exact <laughs> guy we were looking for. Uh, I saw Ference was interviewing the uh, old Duke OC at a uh, continental breakfast right across the street from Kinnick, and I assume a lot of people said, hey, we want this guy. We saw what he did with Riley Leonard. Ferentz said, uh, okay, this is my football team. Uh, I'm going to run this how I want to fucking run it. So you guys want this guy? Fuck this guy. Get him out of here. I don't give a shit. We're, uh, just uh, Give me Tim Lester. That's who I want. You think there's a chance he's trying to save his boy's good name? They thought my son was bad. Wow. Hey, wait until they see this guy. He was I'm, a fucking head coach somewhere. I mean, guy. it can't get much worse. It can't. It actually can't yeah. get any worse. I mean, I suppose it could, but, you know. Uh, yeah, you can be more in last place. I think it can always get worse. It can always get worse. Yeah, you can be more in last place. You could be, but we – listen, Deacon Hill's not going to be the quarterback next year, which is a massive, massive deal. Who recruited him? Well, he, he was a transfer portal guy. So yeah. how do you end up Iowa? Nobody in Iowa said, we want you on the team? Well, I think they were like, hey, we need a heavyweight for the wrestling team if you want to come over and, you know, maybe figure that out. And oh. turns out oh. he, he couldn't beat the heavyweight. Oh. So they're like, well, fuck <laughs> it. You want to go, go play football. You know, we need a left tackle, too. Turns out he couldn't get the left tackle spot. So And then Kate McNamara goes down. They say, well, yeah. Shit, can spin it. You got you can actually throw the football pretty well. So he ends up playing quarterback. But, no, Kate McNamara's oh. coming back. Obviously, the, the crown jewel. Caden Proctor's coming home, transfer not Alabama, you know, going back to where So he's transferred from to. Alabama with Nick Saban and the boys to a Tim Lester led offense mm -hmm. at does, Iowa. It doesn't matter though, because I mean, like, look at Tristan Wirfs. Like he will be a first round pick eventually, you know, like no one gives a shit about that. We are gonna run right off his left butt cheek every single down <laughs> of the season. Uh so yeah, you know, Tim Lester, we'll see. Uh, we'll see who's laughing when Tim Lester, I don't know, is is maybe the, the next coach at LSU next Whoa. Uh, a, a year from yeah, now. Yeah, I'm Whoa. sure. The Big Ten hasn't gotten better either, so it's good that you uh, – uh, See, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about the Big I mean, Washington, okay. They just lost DeBoer and, uh, you know, a bunch of guys left. USC, oh, okay. oh, Caleb Williams is not in there anymore. And, you know, I mean, hey, they, they give about 85 points a game, so – Not to who? To Tim Lester? Yeah. 
Sure. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, yeah, hey, Tim, uh, good luck. Hey, we're pulling for you ultimately, but yeah. this hire is just. <laughs> it's terrible, but guess what? It's just like such a perfect situation to happen yeah. to Hawkeyes fans. Yeah. Who, Iowa, storied franchise. I was still going to win 10 games next year. Yeah. They will. It's a new big It's a great thing. gig, though. It's a great gig. What if he has him like 85th in the country and all? Bingo. Then it's like, boom, what a jump. National He's Champions mocking shit. you. That's fine. He's Not at all. I'm you. saying I would want the gig because you're saying, okay. These guys didn't score a bunch of points. They weren't super explosive. This guy's in the Big Ten. That's fine. You know, because guess what? Everyone mocked and ridiculed last year, and they still went to the Big Ten championship. And now, do you have an actual chance to beat the Michigans of the world and and teams like that? Got to do that in regular season now, don't you? Because they're getting rid of the – like, you guys don't just automatically get a trip if you beat Minnesota a couple times. No, but, I I mean, I looked at who they're playing next year. Like, they're going to be just fine because they're still playing Minnesota. They're still playing Illinois. They're still playing Northwestern. Like you know those regional games. Like they're still and yeah, you're you're going to have to beat a, a Washington or a you know USC or a UCLA. But a couple of those times, uh, okay, USC is going to come to to Kinnick in November. And when it's you know with Tim Lester and the boys with, with Tim Lester fucking dialing up the offense. Yeah, okay, I'll love to, I'll, I'd love to see that. Can't wait. <laughs> Cannot wait. Oregon. I laughed so hard. I laughed so hard when I looked at my phone and saw that tweet, the peculiar hire. How does this happen? Yeah. <laughs> like, how does this happen? You ain't going to tell me. Kirk Ferentz how to run his fucking program. That's how it happened. <laughs> you didn't see the, the AD power had to fire his son, who's she, the worst offense coordinator in the country for two years straight. She did. She did. We're not doing another contract with this guy. The state cannot pay right. this guy uh-huh. for another year. We can't do it. Sorry about it. And then he protested. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No yellow. He certainly did. And then His they, parents' family is And they awesome. got beat 62 nothing in the last two games of the season, you know, and, and had a tough – but it, we're so far away right now. Like, I don't have time to care right now. I'll get pissed about this come week two, week three. <laughs> if Tim Lester – Same old I- Yeah, <laughs> exactly. If Tim Lester can beat Iowa State, that's really all I give a shit about, you know, and then – Oh, they, man, you guys are done. That's all they care about. I mean, it's tough sledding. He, he knows it. West Virginia, I mean, we're trying to win a national championship. Yeah, but you guys won't, yep. and you know that. So, it's like <laughs> – I mean, I, I'll say that, too. I, I, I want us to get into the dance. You know, I want us to be one of the final 12 teams. But in my heart of hearts, I also know – I was going to win 10 games next year. And if they have a really bad year, they'll win eight games. That's kind of just what we do. I love it. Go Hawks. Go Hawks, Go Hawks. baby. Great I a, hire. I got a spirited text messages, uh, a text message from Pat Anger the other day. I have yet to respond, but I would like to let him know that it made me feel really good. Oh, I'm nice. sure he's real excited about it. Pat, if you see this message, that's one of your best messages you've ever sent. I need it. I'm just now catching up on everything that has happened over the last few weeks. Insert motivational speech from Pat Anger mm-hmm. <laughs> and then sign out in Pat Anger style. To keep it. Mo- I, uh, He's the man. Iowa has so many legends, so many legends that I have so much respect for. I mean, let alone Pat Anger and Dallas Clark and George Kittle and Hawk. You go through the Hawk and Chad Greenway, Abdul Hodge, yeah. Mitch, so King, Mitch King. Mitch King was yeah. like the Yonda. Uh, um, yeah, Yonda. Um, Bob Sanders. Bob Sanders. Bob Sanders. Yeah, oh, man. gosh. Yeah, I mean, Bob. Just like so many stallions Center. have come out of the – yeah, Linderbaum. Linderbaum. Yeah. So many stallions have come out of there. And now, listen to Ty. We're going to beat Iowa State. <laughs> okay. All right. You, The way Iowa has produced NFL talent – Oh, yeah. <sighs> Impressive. That's what, that's the that's what I'm saying. How does this happen? Like, how do not how do they not have? By the way, they're a saying. Better pick well, if you look at it, most like, of most of the talent they produce in the NFL is offensive linemen and defensive guys. Not a whole lot of skill position tight guys. Ends. Tight ends for sure. But look at Kittle's fucking stats when he was at Iowa. Dallas Clark played linebacker there for a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Laporta stats. They're saying Cooper DeJean might be the first corner off the board this year. Yeah, yeah. But and then that's the thing is he's basically the only guy the defense is losing, and obviously he's going to be very tough. Why was place, he playing both ways like Travis Hunter? Good question. I believe I actually don't know, so I don't want to say that. But I when I saw that he broke his leg, that's that's what I thought happened. I was like, oh, okay. Like they were putting in stuff for him on offense, and he got hurt that way. I don't know. I th- I wonder if it's just a maybe saving be himself throw the ball to from him, right. Well, that and like, I mean, reverses Pac Man. I mean, Pac Man. He he he, he yeah. got like two or three carries, and I think he averaged like fifteen to seventeen yards. So like, they used him a couple times. So they're never doing that again. Obviously, it's Brian Ferentz offense. Well, that's yards. part of that's it. That's too many yards. <laughs> that is too explosive. It. And that's I, a first down. I, one play. I do. No think, way. I do think they were probably trying to save him from himself because they knew he's going to be a first round pick, and he was an incredible like. 
state champion quarterback three times in high school. Like he he would have been. I mean, he would have been Travis Hunter. State he champion quarterback. Yeah, could have been. Oh Manziel. yeah, oh, believe believe me that that is my yeah. biggest gripe is like they'll have guys who are the unbelievable athletes at quarterback in Iowa, and they they get recruited and then they immediately like they they almost never let them play quarterback. They always either move them to defense or. But he's I mean, a top I guess, ten draft pick. Yeah, I guess it worked out. Yeah, exactly. But, but whenever you can't move a ball forward on the offensive side, believe wow. me, I know. And you got the most explosive what that has ever played on a football field. Yeah, who used to play that position, and you need somebody in that position. It's like you can't drop a couple I'll wildcat. Was, I'll scream it from the mountaintops. Oh, I just we might, that ain't fair. It's football. We might no, get some. Uh, we might get some drunk news from Ian this week. I don't know if he's down down in Mobile or not. He, they're doing the seventy fifth anniversary team. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. Didn't you make that team? I made the team. Congrats. Yeah. Hey, thank you. You going down? Let's go. No, yeah. That's so it. can't, obviously, with the schedule, but. Oh, this is Mobile this week? Yeah. Senior, yep. yeah. Senior bowl? Half starts here, baby. I've seen a wow. lot of photos of a lot of people that made that team down there. I didn't know they were doing a full thing. Daniel like, Jeremiah sent you one yesterday. It's like a full thing over there. Congrats to all the boys that made that Senior Bowl team. Senior Bowl used to be like the, you know, if you're going to get it drafted, was, you're playing. It was this a big game. deal. Yeah, but I think a lot of people sitting out a lot of stuff these days. They're letting underclassmen. There's play a lot. Of, there's a lot of dudes well. there this year. Great. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Senior Bowl. The way they have run it and run it, it's like so hospitable to scouts and to teams. It's like, hey, we would like to make this as efficient as possible, and the teams utilize it as like combine. All right. This is a chance to really stop somebody in a lobby, have a conversation with them, watch them at practice, actually do reps with pads on. Let's see some concepts. Let's put some stuff on the board for quarterback or wide receiver and them have to implement it in practice just like 20, 30 minutes later. So it's like an extended combine almost. And they've done it at a very high level for a very long time. Congrats to them. And thank you for naming me to your team. I did not have the best week or game. Couldn't really do anything because there's no room on the field. But it was an honor to be invited. I wasn't invited to the Combine, so Senior Bowl was pretty much all I had outside of my pro day. So I'm very thankful to be a part of that whole thing. And congrats to everybody that made the 75th anniversary team. Legendary shit down there in Mobile, mm-hmm. Alabama. It's a good week. Good the week f- down there for me. First time in Mardi Gras. You had a great mm-hmm. week down there? Oh, yeah, just the, like the you talked about the Combine stuff, the things you can't do with the Combine, like the one-on-ones. I know, like, offensive linemen, D-line, they do it. But one-on-ones is DBs, receivers. You couldn't press, really. So you had to work and, you know, play off. But uh, just seeing all those top guys around the country, now you get to go one-on-one with them, scouts. You know, working with a, a pro uh, staff. You know, I had the Bengals staff, so I think it was Marvin Lewis and his guys. That was obviously a great experience. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good experience for guys. If you get invited, you can go down there and compete. We had the Jaguars after mm. the – as Del Rio was being fired – so they still coached the Senior Bowl, but they were no longer the staff huh. at Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. So that was like an interesting dynamic. I know one day we got to go talk to the Bengals coaches because the Bengals coaches hadn't got a chance to see our practice because they were yep. with the North team. So it was nice to – it was a good environment. And also getting to meet everybody that you've seen yeah, yeah. You know, on TV pretty much over the last four years in college football. It's a cool dynamic down there. I hope it exists forever for the players, for the good of the players. Yeah, they talk about uh, Puka Nakua now. During that week, being like, a, "Hey, that's kind of where the Rams." Jaden Reed had that last year. Yeah, the two. Bingo. Mm-hmm. And, and you don't even think about like special teams guys that end up getting yeah. signed because you got punt drills. Sure. And nobody's ever really done done it before. You can watch guys actually play football with pads on. So yeah, it's much more than like the combine. Yeah, cool. You're fast or quick. We know everybody is, but I get to see how you are one on one with pads on for four or five days straight. And are you a piece of shit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can find out. I think you can yep. find out in like five days, you know. If, Absolutely. Like I, I got a chance to befriend, like that entire USC crew. Yeah. And it was like watching, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it was awesome. Kush and Clay, Feely Moala, Ray Maluga. Ray there? Yeah. Oh man. Ray yeah. Maluga there, you know, and nice. we p- potentially had a couple of drinks in the lobby, and I know, NFL team saw that as well, mm-hmm. and I think that was probably an up mm-hmm. for some teams. Now some teams probably. You see, everybody's they're kind of doing salads. This group over here has a couple of beers. And then some teams are like, yeah, that is what we are looking for to add to our culture. And some teams are like, anybody that goes that way, we do not want to hear. We want to have the people that are all the way bought in. Think you need those guys on your team. I think everybody's realizing that as we uh, continue to go forward. But it's like you can learn quickly if a guy's a piece of shit or not if you're working with them every single day. Mm-hmm. Like the Jaguars coaches, mm-hmm. from day one to day four, like their thoughts on a guy when he's tired, mm-hmm. whenever, because you got to wake up and take a, 
some tests and some meetings. Then you got to go to practice. Then you got to do this. It's like you can learn. I, I think it's great. I think it's brilliant. I think it's good for guys. The only thing it does is potentially expose assholes and guys that don't have a lot of talent. And uh, that's good for you the NFL. Got, yeah, I was going to say. Scouts good. and Ian time to get together and booze, too. It's another time they can hang out and go hang out all night and somehow get up and watch practice. Yeah, and Ian doesn't have to watch shit. He's just literally down there networking. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's all Ian's doing is yeah. boosting the whole time. It's all Ian's doing. <laughs> Smart. All right, let's get the hell out of here. We'll be back tomorrow with a big time Tuesday. I think we have a huge guest tomorrow. I really? Think, yeah. I think so. Ooh. Massive. Like huge guest tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say it because I'm not 100% sure if it's confirmed. I mean, I, I I did reach out today and it felt confirmed. If we say it, it's not going to happen. But if we do say it, it's not going to happen. What's it rhyme with? Hmm. Uh, Smote. Oh, First name, last on. name. He just said it. Smoke. The whole thing. We'll let you guess. Yeah. It's big. Huge. Yeah. It's massive. Fred Smoke. Nice. No, it's quarterback. Oh. Oh. All right. Let you guess. <laughs> it's big. Flacco? Mm, He's already been on. Okay. Yep. This is the first time ever. Bernie Kozar? Yeah. Bernie. Smoke. Good guess. Okay, burn. Yeah, it's not Bernie Kosar. Damn. Get it? Yeah. Doesn't rhyme with smoke. Nowhere near. He's Canadian, though. They speak weird. Yeah, true. Yeah. O- Oven. Boz- Bernie Kosar. Kosar. Sponsor. That rhyme. There's a chance. We got Tom. <laughs> Yesterday. All right. God. Why does Dan do that? <laughs> yeah, like six times. It's so annoying. <laughs> we say Don, though, and stuff. So Yeah, but well, yeah, he's not cool. from the city of Boston. You guys are from Pittsburgh. He's from fucking Connecticut. Like, people in Connecticut don't have Boston accents. I'm just going to tell you that. So you're saying he, right just, he just added that to his repertoire? No, it's like you said. It's how I've always said it yesterday. It's how I've always said it. <laughs> so, I don't know. Is that what DJ issue? As, as how come as you, don't say, that, you don't say it? You don't say it, yeah. Because I'm from, I'm from the suburbs north of Boston. I'm from 15 minutes north you're of Boston. You're saying South Boston, though, is the yesterday? No, I'm, no, no. no. Uh, South, oh, yeah, South Boston, Charlestown. Like, there are a bunch of suburbs around Boston that have bought Dorchester, Brockton, all those places. Even some Gloucester. further north of me, yeah, Gloucester, Burlington, like there are towns, Medford, all over that. But have, it doesn't span the Connecticut. It does. It doesn't span the state of Massachusetts. Uh, uh, that's why. I mean, there are towns like mine where. Wait, like, Dan, will you get off Dan's back? Dan said, "I don't know." Earlier today, I, I, I'm not jumping on. Remember, his back. he said that. I'm he not did. jumping on his back. It was asked why. And then he said, "I ain't never saying that again." Yep. <laughs> I never said that. Where'd you find that? He hates that clip. What? Which clip is it? It's maybe my new favorite clip. I don't know, okay? That's huge. <laughs> yeah, oh. massive. <laughs> Isn't it, AJ? I saw the tweet. Yeah, it got me chuckling right away. Well, I'm sitting in here, and we're bullshitting about the weekend that was. Uh-huh. A lot of things happened. And then all of a sudden, I just hear, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know. Okay, like, distraught Dan. I'm like, hold the phone. Everyone shut up. So I just... Did Dan just say, I don't know? And Gumpy <laughs> was like, he did. And I'm like, can we get that clip? Gumpy's like, yup, and just goes in. It was a matter of him saying it to about two and a half minutes later mm-hmm. because we had the pool, boom, crop, edit, this whole thing. We're like, this is the biggest news of the fucking day. Yeah. Awesome. I don't know if a coach is getting hired or not, but Dan Orlovsky just said he didn't. He didn't know. He didn't know. I Might know. be why Schefter isn't reporting anything today because he knew. Yeah. Hey, he any news get, that I say yeah, is going to get buried. You guys are just going to say something about Orlovsky telling the world for the first time ever that he didn't have the exact answer to something. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then what I say is nothing. No one cares. Has Schefter done anything? Call him. Let's call Schefter back and see if he's done anything. Because we got a lot of fucking text messages and calls during the call during the conversation. Sounds like just from Uh, what he said and what you just said about him getting a lot of texts and calls, there's some politicking possibly going on behind the scenes here. It feels like for who chosen? I don't know. Chosen not elected? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Only two left, right? Two jobs left. What is it? Selected, not elected. Selected, not elected. That's Michael Lombardi's. Could it be anybody from these staffs playing in the Super Bowl? That's maybe the thought. Let's see if he answers. He's going to get so mad if we FaceTimed him in the middle of the day, not planned. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to get a text. Don't just text me. I, I can't can't be answering. <laughs> My phone battery. He said that to me one day when, when I tried to FaceTime him in the middle. I, we were over there. We're like trying to get an answer. And we know he has the connect to this person. And like, how should we be talking about this? You know the answers. We don't. And he hits the fuck you button on. And then I get a text. It's like, don't. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, text me. Okay, I, I, got, I got a full thing. And you're going to kill my battery, too. And we're like, that's when the whole... Yeah. Need the portable. Need the portable batteries. What? Hey, yeah. How does he does not? CSP I make 
he had the magnetic deal that he stuck on there all day long. Uh, his friends at the Pat McAfee show might have sent him a couple portable chargers, depend which one he likes. Who knows if he's gotten it yet or if anybody's told him to open his mail. Somebody needs to put on his calendar. Yeah. Open box of mail, mm -hmm. but that'll get on there someday. Let's get uh, hell out of here. Tomorrow's huge, though. Need to know that. Tomorrow's a big one. Yeah. People are going to talk about what we talk about tomorrow with the person we talk about it with. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's going to become a thing, I think, which is cool. We're very lucky to do this every single day. Let's enjoy the hell out of this next two weeks before the Super Bowl. Only one NFL game left, Jeez. and it's the big one. Fuck. Damn. Big shot to Top Golf. Welcome to the program. Love you, Top Golf. Big shout out to uh, Verizon. Obviously, Verizon has the greatest coverage on earth. Get Verizon home internet for a blazing fast and reliable home internet. Cut the cable. Switch to Verizon home internet. The price is the price guaranteed. You don't need to worry about unexpected price hikes. Thank Love God. That. From Love your that. friends at Verizon. Shout out to them. Shout out to you. We'll be back, Mignana. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. We're in this thing together. Right, AJ? Absolutely. We always are. Team on me. Team on three. One, two, three. Team. Team. Goodbye. <laughs>